From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is The Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, comedians Brian Catlin and Sam Tripoli. Plus a spirited round of the Rotten Tomatoes game. And now, cue the Ranchera music. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. Church with mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for sharing. I love all the stories about you guys sharing the show with neighbors and kids and friends. Sam Tripoli, comedian, is in studio. Good to see you, Sam. Brother, thank you for having me. I appreciate that. Oh, my <laughs> pleasure. Uh, Brian Callen is running late, but should be in Let's at some hope. point. <laughs> Let's hope. Uh, Sam and Brian also do a uh, podcast called Conspiracy Social Club, a.k.a. Deep Waters. And uh, I'm glad you're here because if you would have got hold of me even three or four years ago and started talking to me about conspiracies and government and that kind of stuff, I was always a, a conscientious objector to any of the stuff. And to be fair, some of the earlier stuff was, you know, we never really landed on the moon. Right. Or the Jews yeah, weren't in yeah. the tower. And I was like, the classics. Give, give the classics, the hits. You know <laughs> what I mean? And I was like, I saw Capricorn One, OJ's best movie. And uh, I get it, but I'm to no, know. I think we did land on the moon. But then it's then sort of COVID hit, yes. you know? And then FBI doing a lot of raiding of people's uh, they didn't agree with, you know? And then a lot of like, um, the steel dossier, you right. know, and stuff like that. Hunter Biden's laptop. And I was like, oh, maybe there is a little more going on on a conspiracy governmental level than and also getting back to the Kennedy assassination. Like, isn't it time to release all the documents? No, they don't want to release all the documents. Even a little Watergate stuff in there. There's a dusting of like Fauci and Wuhan lab and stuff. And now, man. I love it. And that's a lot of people. For me, uh, you know, I started my, I have a podcast. My my big show is Tin Fall Hat with Sam Tripoli. And that show came out of the fact that I was watching, like, Bernie Sanders play, like, arenas and, and Hillary Clinton playing cafeterias. Right. And everyone's telling me she's leading in the polls. And I, right. I was listening to people like Jimmy Dore and Lee Camp, and they're talking about exit polls. So I decided to start doing it. And then you just start going down this, this kind of rabbit hole, and it gets super interesting. And so everybody goes, is everything conspiracy? Based on my knowledge. Knowledge and what my research, yes, everything is conspiracy from the food you're eating, the the, uh, the air you're breathing, and just even our money system is super interesting. So I can understand why people wouldn't be at first, but if you're still not at least a little bit going, okay, something might be going on. It makes me nervous, you know. Like, why are you still wearing masks? Like, like that's the most interesting. I was just went and got some Starbucks. This guy had three masks on making my coffee, and nobody with masks on looks healthy at all. They're trying to stay healthy, but you look like you're starting at non healthy. Right. Yeah. Now, there's two kinds of, as I would explain to Dr. Drew all the time, like you take something like masks. So there's two ways to approach a conspiracy theory or even if it's not is it effective isn't it effective like how do we how do we approach this my approach was less conspiracy and more just sort of practical boots on the ground right. which is i'm not even going to argue over whether a mask is effective or not i will let let's just say it is but if you're going to require that I wear one at all times on an airplane and then hand me sacks of Fiesta Mix and a Fresca <laughs> yeah. and tell me I can take it down during that time period, <laughs> then I'm going to announce that I'm not going to argue whether masks are effective or not effective, but I am going to argue that the way we implement it is definitely not effective. Every motherfucking time <laughs> Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or Mayorkas or whoever, they stood behind with their mask on and then they went up to the dais, got <laughs> behind the microphone, took the mask off, bloviated for 20 minutes and then put the mask back on and then silently stood next to the person who had their mask off, bloviating into the microphone. So 
Mask can be effective, yeah. but that ain't effective, and that's not science. Rule. Let's have a consistent rule, like the restaurant, right? If I stand up, I have to wear a mask. If I sit down, I don't need a mask because apparently yeah. COVID has uh, vertigo uh, right. and can't look and, down and, and it gets dizzy, right? The so. number of times somebody lectured me about a mask with the mask below their nose yeah. and or what I used to see on the flights all the time, the twisted strap, which made it pinch and leave a three-quarter inch gap on the side cheek of each side. So they're lecturing me about a mask, but I can see through their mask into their mouth moving, <laughs> lecturing me about wearing a mask. So I was like, I don't want to get into the argument of whether it works or not. I want to get into the... Okay, I, I'm i assuming that scuba gear works. Yeah. Right. But if you went down to 100 fathoms and you took it off, <laughs> and then you well, ate chips, yeah. and it wouldn't work. So that's my argument. But, uh, but the mask like doesn't all, work anyway, but yes. All that kind of like these, whatever you want to call it, psyops or way people think, like... Isn't there always so much hypocrisy? Though? Like, I've been doing stand-up in L.A., and you're trying to figure out, like, the political correctness of comedy, yet, like, they'll stare at you for some things, and then someone will go up there and just break that whole rule, and they'll laugh, like, hysterically. And you're like, if you give me a consistent rule, I'll follow it. If there is no consistent rule, I'm not going to follow your stupid rules that make you just try to feel safe and, and, and in a, a warm, fuzzy place. Well, for me, the way I got to a lot of um, consistency and truth because, you know, I don't, like, I don't like to talk about myself, but nobody's batting <laughs> average was higher in COVID than mine. Yeah. Every, you look back and see these clips of Rochelle Walensky explaining that she's scared as a mother or she didn't want, I mean, the clip of her kid wanting to go to summer camp where she's just clearly lying and then saying the very last day, or, or it's Fauci talking about BLM marches are fine, but going to the ball game isn't fine in the outdoor stadium. I made fun of every one of those clips in real time. Yeah. Everyone else looks back at them now, two years later, and goes, oh, man, what were we thinking? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what I was thinking. I was screaming, he's full of shit, she's full of shit, this is bullshit, in real time, all the way through. So I've been very consistent. And the way... If people are listening would like if you w would like a higher batting average you have to look for a couple things one is when people aren't agnostic when 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 everyone on CNN becomes an expert in hydroxychloroquine overnight <laughs> and knows it's not effective you want here's what here's the person you should believe if Don Lemon says hydroxychloroquine I never heard of it. Uh, maybe it works. I, I hope it does. I don't know. We'll have to check. Then believe him. If he says this is horse pace, it'll never work. This is these are lies. These are these. This is maga lie. If you start hearing that, you go, okay. Why is that person pushing so hard? The uh, the example I always use is you know when the cop comes up to the window and goes, uh, pop the trunk. Let me take a look in your trunk. If you start screaming, there's nothing in the trunk, yeah. and speed off, yeah. then there's a good chance I there's agree. something drunk. The driver should be like, yeah. I, I'll pop the trunk. I don't know what okay. you think's yeah. in there, yeah. but have fun with the space saver spare. So if it's everywhere all the time, instantly, yes. Yes. That's, you go, this is a talking point that they're getting right. handed. So right. we, if everyone is an expert on hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin, overnight yep, yep. and it's all the same talk yep. and it's all the same horse pace then be suspicious how did they all arrive right all of them know hunter Biden's laptop is a fake at the same time 100 all the journalists 100 none of the journalists go right i don't know i haven't seen the laptop who <laughs> right, has it right uh, right where what what's going on i can't say it's fake because i don't know when, agnostic look wait, yes you're so right when they all hit on the same place right. at the same time then it's being fed. And then it's just like all of a sudden we have these CIA and FBI people coming out and suddenly like they're good guys. Like the, you know, it's like I grew up where you don't trust any of them. They yeah. did shady stuff. And now all of a sudden they're the voice of reason, which is like really interesting, dude. Yes. Also worry when, so when everyone lands on the same talking point on the same day at the yeah. same time, all the journalists, because as a journalist, you should be out kicking tires, yeah. getting stories. Truth to power. Yeah, Wolf Blitzer, go out and find out whether it's real or yeah, not. Right. Don't just take get the get the memo from the White House. So, yes, you have to know that. 
when then. And then the Pfizer when, brought to you by Pfizer, right, brought to you by right, Pfizer, right, brought to you by Pfizer. Right. So when everyone allow, when all the journalists land in the same place overnight and have the exact same story, yeah. that's that's one tell. The other tell is when they smash and attack anybody's narrative who disagrees with theirs. Yeah. That's the next one, too. Like, why are you tr- getting these guys deplatformed and fired because they're simply saying, open the schools, or I want to see your dad on closing the beaches. When you all go after right. them, that's another tell. Yeah, trust the science, but if you question the science, you lose your medical license. Like, right. There's like right. the, the amount of mental gymnastics that has to go through that for you to get to that space and accept that as logical thinking is just ridiculous. Right, so people, again... Nobody's an expert in infectious diseases. Nobody knows whether ivermectin works or is dangerous or hydroxychloroquine or six foot spacing or overnight. This, yeah. this doctor from Stanford is, is dangerous and Rochelle Walensky a genius who knows what she's talking about. You're not going to be able to suss all that out, but it's the reaction. If you hear a side saying, uh, well, the guy from Stanford, he may have a point. I don't know. We should we should try to suss it out instead of he's dangerous, deplatform him. Once you hear that, you're being lied to. That's and, how it and works. And when they tell you that we're handling this in a new way that's never been handled like that before, right? Like right. where it's like if we have a way of dealing with viruses and now with this new virus, we're completely throwing all that out and we're going to hand it completely differently, right. which is this super over dramatic way of operating. It's just super interesting and it just it gets you into this kind of group think and if you study it you can just see every step that they're doing to program you to fear this thing with these videos coming out of china people just falling down that this is just step by step a way to gain a certain reaction and people who study the media know what they're doing we're saying this doesn't make any sense and they were just getting banned off of social media and all that stuff well the other thing is when it comes to again agnostic which is where did the virus come from? There's a lab that works on these viruses up the road, and then there's a wet market with a pangolin and a crow in it. Yeah. Uh, Wolf Blitzer is 100% sure it came from the market, from the yeah. farmer's market, yeah. the yeah. wet Wolf market. Blitzer. Why is Wolf Blitzer 100% sure? Why is everybody 100% sure? Why are you getting screamed at if you said, hello, maybe it came from a lab? Yeah. Now, my point is, is I don't know where it came from. It makes sense that it came from a lab, but I'm open to the wet market. But somehow you people who do not know and cannot know and never cite any sources. Yeah. <laughs> if Wolf Blitzer said, I got a guy I went to high school yeah. with, works at the Wuhan uh-huh. lab. I trust him. He said it didn't come from the lab. All right, I'm listening. No, Wolf Blitzer, you just know it didn't come from the lab. I'm yeah. not sure how you know. You know Hunter's la- Hunter Biden's laptop isn't real. I don't know how you know this, but somehow you know this. Now I'm suspicious. Yeah. When you solve the mystery within an hour, (laughs) that says me something's going on. This is not a Scooby-Doo cartoon where we (laughs) find it's the old man at the Wax Museum and you automatically know Wolf Pulitzer. So it's like when you have all the answers to the mystery very quickly, that says suspect to me. But here's the question for you, Sam. And Brian, in 29 minutes, when he gets here, <laughs> I've been told he'll get here in about 29 minutes. Here's the question that I always ask. And we have a, a clip. The, the, the beauty is all this stuff is in high def now. And you oh, let me see Rochelle Walensky lying to everybody about having a bad feeling about her fucking 16-year-old son who clearly has some dementia or autism or something because this guy comes home every day as a teenager and and marks off the calendar as to when he's going to summer camp the next year. <laughs> oh, yeah. So there's something for okay, so first things first. If you have a son in high school and he comes home from school every day and and summer camp is in July, right? right? <laughs> and it is uh, October, <laughs> and uh, summer oh. camp is July 2021, <laughs> right, right. or or 21, and it's 20 October, <laughs> and you're ru- he's running home and putting an X on the calendar after lunch. 
Something's wrong with that yeah. kid. Yeah. I, I don't. You need to get that kid some activities. That's yeah. what you need to do. If if I told my daughter we're going to Disneyland a year from now, <laughs> right, right, right? And I saw her scratching X's at starting tomorrow. I'd say, baby, I said we're going a year from now. I'll, yeah. I'll give you three days well, notice. I'll, let you know, I'll give you right. an alert. But here's her very true story about her son. With regard to camp. I have a 16-year-old. Every day, every year, he comes home from camp, and he writes the number of days until he returns to camp the next year. This year, it got to zero, and I told him he wasn't going. All right, first I'm, off, she's a bitch, because she should have really given him three days notice. He, he'd already put the canoe on top of the Explorer, yeah. you know what I mean? He's standing there wearing waders and holding, like, a fishing net. Yeah. Ready. You should have broken to him earlier. That night, at least. At least the night. He's got his bags yeah. packed. He's Tell wearing his fishing got hat. COVID, they're all dead. He's telling all his friends, "I'll see you in ten days." <laughs> yeah. He's standing. He's sitting in the Ford Explorer, holding a fishing pole yeah, and yeah, a paddle. Yeah. And then bait. she comes yeah. out and says, "Clear it out." That's probably the most psychopath thing she's done in this whole thing. Is it not is. tell her kid not tell that her. summer camp's not happening. Besides yeah. all the COVID lying and all that stuff, telling your kid that summer camp isn't happening is probably the most cold blood thing I've ever heard in my life. It. it, it if the kid goes to summer camp every year on the 1st of September, do you think he has to run home when he comes home September 13th and then scrawl down? Here's how many days. All right. And then she told him, we'll hear it again, Dawson. But now she's lying. She's lying. She's just she's lying. She didn't do this. This didn't happen. I mean, she may have told her son, uh, hey, no camp this year, but she yeah. didn't tell him that day. With regard to camp, I have a 16-year-old. Every day, every year, he comes home from camp, and he writes the number of days until he returns to camp the next year. This autism. year, yeah, it got to kid. zero, and I told him he wasn't going. <laughs> I want my kids back in camp. Wow. Like, Why do you let day. it get to zero? All right. She's fucking lying, number one. <laughs> number two. Camp is the best place for a fucking 16-year-old, you crazy gypsy bitch. Camp is the best place. Sunshine, vitamin D, recreation, yep. movement, outdoors. Yep. And you're saying no to this. And you want us to listen to you about yep. what? You're totally right. Honey, shouldn't we tell him? I mean, Not <laughs> wait till <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> I tell him day camp. As a matter of fact... We may get him loaded up in the car, and I'll take off for camp, and then I'll just stop and turn <laughs> right, around. Dude. We're not going to let right. him know. 100%. I don't want to ruin his evening. Don't tell him tonight. <laughs> don't tell him that camp's not happening outdoors in the sun with activities. Take him to the weed and liquor shop and have him buy right. some stuff that seemed to be the right. answer to right. what they think what we should have been doing during this whole thing. Also, did she get her 16-year-old vaccinated? Because if she did, then camp's no problem, but 100%. she never explained whether she got her kid Facts vaccinated math. or not. Is that the end of the clip, uh, Dawson? <laughs> it's an excellent. It's it's so, this stuff is I great. Oh, sorry. It's, it's it's This stuff, what's the date of this shit? I mean, it's not even two years old. That's the scary part. All right, here we go. Crazy Gypsy. I want our kids back in camp. Oh, you do. <laughs> we now have 38,000 new infections on average per day. Yeah. Last May 11th, it was 24,000. Yeah. And we sent a lot of kids home and camps were closed. Yeah. The camp guidance is intended to get our kids to camp and allow them to stay there. And oh, how are you getting your kid to camp? You just told him he's not going to camp, number one. No healthy camp kids died. None. None. So we're listening to you. Why? What are you saying? I don't, A stupid or liar? Do you are you lying she's, or she's no, stupid? No, she's lying. Do you think she's, or is she just... One of these people that my paycheck is so connected to this narrative, I'm just going to throw up on this microphone and just say diarrhea to everybody. Or do you think that she's just that psychopath that she's just a liar? Or does she I, believe it? I, I, I play this game stupid or liar out loud. <laughs> I play stupid or liar in my head. I have no idea. I mean, we have a clip. Now, what year is that clip from, Dawson? Does it, does it have the camp clip? And uh, by the way, if you pull them, always see if you can pull the, the clip, because uh, the date, because it's always, always important for, uh, for this stuff. Because some of this stuff is just wasn't that long ago at all. Like we had the vaccines. Yeah. Any dates? All right. Well, if you can't find the date, but find the date every time. We will. All right. We have, um, we have her just speaking as a mother with a bad feeling. By the way, Sam, I ridiculed 
every one of yeah. these in real time. Yeah. Day of. Yeah. The day it dropped, I made fun of it. Yeah. All right. We'll play that. When I first started at CDC about two months ago, I made a <sighs> promise to you. I would tell you the truth. Oh, even really? If it was not the news. We As, As I'm reading about this, your kid. Now I'm right. reading this statement. When I have to share the, the truth, truth about your kid. And I have to hope and trust you will listen. I'm going to pause here. I'm going to lose the script. And I'm going to reflect on the recurring feeling I have of impending doom. Impending doom. And she's, I'm still reading, by the she's way. She's speaking to us as a as a mother. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, May 21 was the summer camp. So we had the vaccines. Could have got your kid uh, vaxxed up. Could have said, uh, got my kid vaxxed, dropping off a camp the other day. Yeah. But uh, no. Yeah. And now she's got a feeling of impending doom. Yeah. Uh, this is not leadership. Something's wrong. And they should. Here's my whole point. Do not listen to these people. Don't listen. I'm not to saying people. don't listen to anyone, and I'm not saying don't hear what they're saying, but don't take your marching order from fools. Yeah, 100. percent Like punk rock is dead. That's oh my, my opinion. God, punk rock is dead. And like everybody's a conformist, and we're all cowtown to power, and we got lost, man. And we let these like. It's very interesting because you, know, you know I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Like. I still see people wearing masks in 2023, and like you can't. That's what you're supposed to do. You're so, if you want to wear it, wear a mask. But there's a word for that. It's a Greek term, and it's called retarded. Okay, <laughs> and you can be, wear it. And I'm gonna call you a retard to your face. I'm sorry because you made me deal with all this stuff. You used authority, whether it was police officers, whether it's the FAA, or when we were flying, and you abused your power. Now, now you're gonna. Go, you want? I mean, the mask thing is a virus. If you believe in viruses, it is so small. The notion that a cloth mask could do any damage. I is miss. I, I remember when people are using gaiters and turtlenecks. Yeah, it, it, I, it's all, it's all dance of the tards. It's, it's all dance illusion. of the tards, bro. It, it, it's taking superstitious people and making them think that there's a way to protect themselves if they stand in the elevator in the corner versus yeah. in the middle. Yep, and that satiates. You know what it is? It satiates kids. You tell a kid, you know, there's a boogeyman under your bed, but you eat your broccoli and you go to bed by nine and you do your homework, then the boogeyman will stay under. Obviously, you can't control the boogeyman or there is no boogeyman, but it works on kids. Yes. Except for I had a bunch of 63 year olds yelling at me to pull my mask up (laughs) on a horse trail. Something fucking happened to people and it's bad and they're malleable and it's dangerous the dangerous part is how fast we can get your dumb ass to do exactly what we're telling you to do, even if it doesn't make yep. sense. Yeah, it's chaos. Driving alone in a car, you're like, what do you do? Are you are you think you're driving into a virus that is just floating? I in the got air? the answer to that. I I I spoke to someone who was driving alone <laughs> in their car. <laughs> By the way, if I ever get inquisitive, it means you're going to be insulted later in the pod. It's not yeah. interest. If I go, oh, you brought your dog to the airport. What kind of dog is that? Yeah. I'll, make, I'll make fun of you and your dog. Yeah, I have no interest in your dog. Can I take a picture? You. <laughs> I get a shot of you and your dog. This would be awesome. I, oh, what is that? Shih Tzu? I love Shih Tzu. Oh, yeah. Speaking of shit, I slipped in something in the, the Delta Terminal. Is that your dog? So if, I, if, I, if I'm interested, I want something. It usually means you're going to be the butt of the joke. So... Um, I mean, this is essentially your ne'er do well brother in law, like calling you up and go, uh, uh, You still got that orbital sander from back in the day? It's yeah. like he's not just asking how the sander's doing, he wants to borrow it from you and never give it back. So, guy got out of the car at like Trader Joe's alone, you know, wearing the mask, got it, wearing the mask in the car, then gets out of the car with the mask. And he starts walking in. I'm like, hey, I saw you wearing the mask in the car. Is it uh, you driving for Uber or something? He goes, No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. I go, well, uh, why why in the car, though? Just just alone, you know? I, I, I'm always doing this thing. Where I'm, like, I'm thinking about doing oh, yeah. it. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, hey, yeah. this may be the greatest life hack ever. Get I on his level. <laughs> I'm a maniac. I drive alone in a car with the mask around my chin. But you're, you know something. Yeah. I, I can tell by the 96 Saturn uh-huh. with the Bondo that you're on to something yeah. here. And he goes, uh, he goes, I just wear it in the car. Scariest answer ever. So I don't have to remember to pull it. Oh, up. my God. So he's just training himself to wear it, you know, in the hot tub and at night in his bed. Like, so he doesn't fuck up and walk into the Trader Joe's because it's been around his ear and not a, is around his mouth. It's unbelievable. And then I started thinking, <laughs> how, how's, 
How's taking a shit work? Like, do you have to stuff a roll of toilet paper down your pants just, <laughs> yeah. so, just so you don't? Case? You well, forget. you could have to shit at work, and then you'd forget. <laughs> you'd forget to wipe your ass, right? Because you didn't have the. But the toilet paper reminds you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, like, like all of a sudden, the nerds became the dumbest people in the world, right? Like all the people who were like the best at uh, at doing homework and handing in reports and getting all the great grades in school just became the dumbest people. It's it's my theory about smart versus intelligence. Like smart people are street smart, right? You understand emotions and you have experiences in life. You understand how people operate. Intelligent people are ones who just understand the system and how to play within the system. And the system is if I conform to authority, I will get rewarded. More right. and more and more and more. And that's why we have these libs of TikTok teachers who are just like, for some reason, <laughs> throughout everything we knew about humanity and raising children and thought putting a gay pride flag in a kindergarten class All is right. totally logical adult stuff. Well, I'm glad you brought up the gay f- pride flag because I was on to this shit. It's early. nuts. Well, here's the deal, everybody, as I say all the time. It's By called- the way, where's flag? Worst flag ever for creative people, gay people, most creative people Listen, ever. If, they, if, they, if they ever have to go to war, <laughs> they're going to get their asses kicked with that flag. That is not Worst a going to flag. war flag. Eight bit diarrhea. I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah. What are we celebrating? They're just adding colors to it for more people who show up. I, anyone has heard me for any number of years, 15, maybe even 20 years ago screaming about this i thought it was in a book but we couldn't find it in one of my books which is weird now we got to go out to lynch and yeah. ask him because i've talked about this a million times in west hollywood the side of the sheriff's car the patrol car whoever's assigned to west hollywood because some places have lapd and some people have sheriff and it's it, it varies a little the sheriff cars who work west hollywood 20 years ago and still do have the gay flag on right, the side right, of the car. Right, we have right, a right. picture of yeah. it somewhere. You got to kind of uh, <laughs> close up. Yeah. You got to do uh, yeah. go right there in the corner. Don't be the... don't be surprised, uh, Ben, if we say, "Could you punch in on it a little bit?" Because uh, this is not a fantastic example of it because it's far away. Okay, <laughs> all right. Just either get a better example or be prepared to punch in on it but anyway they have the gay flag oh, there, there it is. is it's it's jumbled up now it's not done up like the gay flag it's it's done up because believe me i got into it this is 20 years ago that I was looks like, like tetris gay right, tetris. Yeah. gay tetris it's like a rubik's cube i was out. like what yeah it's like somebody chewed up a rubik's cube and shit it out on the side <laughs> yeah. of a squad car now i said to everybody why is it jumbled like this because i know how this conversation works they went, you know, 2000, they went, look, sheriffs, guys with mustaches, <laughs> guys who beat their wives. Listen, we want the gay flag on the side of your cruiser. And they were like, no fucking way. <laughs> and then they went, what if we jumbled it up so like yeah. people couldn't really uh, yeah. see it was the gay flag? Like, people wouldn't know what it was, but we'll put, we'll know it's on there. And so I said, well, what kind of fucking shape is this jumble in? What is this? It's the shape of West Hollywood. Oh. Mm. Now, Pixelated a little bit. If you did Florida or California, maybe, or Italy, yeah. like the gay boot right, or something, right, like right, maybe right, I could right, figure right, that right. out. Nobody knows what the shape of West Hollywood is from a helicopter. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's not defined. So all this does is a jumble of the gay flag in the shape of West Hollywood, except for no one knows what oh, that yeah. shape is. So it's confusing. It doesn't, it's confusing. That doesn't make sense. But I said at the time, bad idea. Yeah, for and sure. And everyone, everyone looks at me, as they do for everything all the time, whenever Voice I say reason. anything, and they go, what? why? Why? What's wrong with it? Now, smash, smash cut to... Gay For flag. those who are listening, it looks like a, a rainbow version of a blue waffle. If you guys right. know what I'm talking about, right? Does anyone know him? That it, it does. It looks like a moth. Just it's just not I'll good. I'll never see it. The All same. right. So the now we have the flag flying over the White House, and we have the hockey players need to wear the sweater, yeah, or they're going to get suspended. Hockey players need sweat now. In the year 2000, and Dawson and Ben, you can look it up, but Chris, I don't know what year. 
and we probably should have, what year this started, but it's, it's been 20 years, 15, 20 years. Like I, I was yelling about this 15 or 20 years ago. So then everyone looks at me and they go, what's the big whoop? <laughs> Relax. What? And, yeah, and I go, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because it is going to end up 100. with a guy in the NHL yep. not putting on the gay flag and getting suspended. That's, that's where this is heading because it doesn't stop. Right. It never stops. It's called a progressive movement. It yep. moves forward. It progresses. 100%. This is where it's going. But I would shut everyone the fuck up. And I'll tell you, <laughs> I would shut everyone the fuck up. I said to them, they'd go, so you have all my friends and everybody. They go, well, what's wrong with it? This is the people. This is the community they represent. They represent this community. We host a predominantly gay. By the way, it's like 40% gay. We think it's 110% gay. It feels that way, but it's not even 50% gay. Yeah, there's plenty of straight Dude, people couples don't even living. people understand in- how small, like, <clears throat> this is <laughs> yeah. gay mecca. Like, people are always like, oh, San Francisco's gay. No, San Francisco has nothing on... LA and West Hollywood. And if you drive through West Hollywood, it's like what, seven blocks? Yeah. In a city well, that hold has on. Thousands. Let me count the gay cubes. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I don't know if one represents each block. Yeah, I think the red ones blocks. mean there's a it's more concentrated. More con- more gay the activity. Squares, yeah. More oh, butt yeah, fucking yeah, that's in that choir. The, <laughs> the redder, the kinkier. That's what it is. Yeah, that's what it is. The, the I, blue I is people still in the closet and they don't want to admit it. The guys the haven't red come is in just a month. Like, yeah. You just walk around with no pants on anyway. I'll stay out of the yellow, thank you. I don't I even need to know what that <laughs> oh. represents. I'll just steer clear of that and walk around to the green. But um, do you find a year? It's got to be somewhere. All right, anyway, it's been many a year. So I, I, I'm i going to write a book called The Lone Dickhead. I just say <laughs> stuff. This is bullshit. Respect. I'm not doing it. Oh, that's this is point. nuts. You know, Put the black check mark for Black Lives Matter on your Twitter. I'm not doing it. Why do you have to do it? Because I know everything in advance. I know where everything is you heading, where, yeah. and that's why I'm not doing this. But that makes me the lone dickhead. So, I, so the, the answer is... Why? What is wrong with representing the community that that they serve with the flag? And I, which is still half, but fine. My answer is we're sitting in Glendale, California right now, predominantly Armenian. My arm. Would you like the Armenian flag on the side of the Glendale Sheriff Cruisers? And if not, because now we're getting in some slippery slope area where we have to put the flag yeah. of every community which flies in the face of the United States in the I melting agree. pot. Because now you got the squad car with the Armo flag on it, but maybe I'm a small business and I'm Irish. Yeah. You're going to take care of me? Yep. Or maybe you are. I don't know. You drove past. You didn't help me. Is it because I'm selling shillelaghs? <laughs> Or, or, or clo- four leaf clovers, <laughs> shillelaghs and Come clovers, with you, man. I knock it off, everybody. Yeah, that's what crazy. I'm saying. It's not all a good thing. And I was yelling about this for twenty fucking years. Well, it's also that like, okay, you're gay. That's great, but like, is that everything you do? Is that every? I mean, like, what percentage of your life is actually spent I've, I've, doing that thing? Yeah, like, every, why is that defining who everybody, you are? Everybody, I tell everyone this answer, Sam. They go. Let's talk about your white privilege. I go, you want want to know what my real white privilege is? Not giving a fuck. Not having to be in a group. Not, oh, uh, Billy Bush said what? I got to agree with him. He's a white guy. You know, I don't have to agree with anybody. I don't have to waste all my time with your fucking uh, identification and marches. And I'm as a proud African American, as a Hispanic, as a Latinx, as a gay Latino. You guys waste half your fucking life with this group of scammers that are trying to fucking get money off of you. My white privilege is picking out random white dudes and going, I don't fucking like that guy. Yeah. He's not my brother. Yeah. Adam Schiff's a douche. I'm not listening to him. Adam Schiff <laughs> is a douche. And like but, when but I watch like commercials, whole, but they're, they, they're just, can't, like, why is this commercial? Like, I, I drive by, there's a bank billboard near my house, and it's got a fat drag queen putting on makeup, <laughs> And that's the billboard. I don't even know what you're selling. (laughs) It used to have the time and temperature. Yeah, I don't even know what we're selling at this point. Now, they're not, first off, the B of A in in, in, uh, Agora Hills doesn't give a fuck about the movement. They're just. ESG school. They're just trying to sell stuff. ESG, environmental social. All right. I got got another. I got a clip from TMZ last night that I think will, it'll explain everything that's wrong. With society, and, okay, uh, and uh, 
we'll take a quick break. We'll uh, be back with more Sam. And Brian should be walking in any minute now, right after this. Dennis, he thought, he thought it was at 1, one thirty or something. Is that a mic thing? No, it's 10.30, but he read one thirty. Oh, okay. Must, yeah. All right. There's you wanna... a... Sorry. Go find out when that How co- I, I'm the, the drug I'm addict. Looking. How come I'm on no time? Reports. <laughs> That picture was from 2013 at the Pride Parade. Though, oh, so. okay. Well, yeah, and the yeah. other thing is they, they started putting rainbow. They put something about rainbow crosswalks or something in 2012. Like, so I, it's right. It's around 2012. I'm, so you're you're right on the money. No, 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 no. That that picture's from the from the parade, Pride but the parade. shit was on the car 10 right. years before the parade. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yes, I don't know exactly okay. when. Okay. That. I don't even give a shit about the parade. Like, so we, we, why are these white women bringing their kids to these things? <laughs> I remember you talking about that in 2006 on the radio show. So yeah, all right, yeah, all right. Here we go. It's time for Nicaraguan Name That Movie with Adam's buddy Oswaldo. See if you can guess which movie this famous line is from. Back I'm to the left. Back I'm to the left. If you said Oliver Stone's JFK. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. You're correct. Now, back to the show. Sam Tripoli here, and I got to tell you on that subject, I was never down with the conspiracy theories, uh, JFK, but look into it. There's a lot more. There's a lot oh, more there. Deeper. There's a there's lot new more. Stuff a lot out. more CIA and oh, yeah. shit going on. That's a big. Do you hear the new thing that I think Tucker Carlson and I have my issues with Tucker Carlson, but um, you know he was talking about a big reason Nixon was gone is because he basically pulled the CIA aside and goes, "I know you guys did it." And there's actually an audio recording of it, and there's silence from the CIA, the head of the CIA. Yeah, there's basically, whether it's Nixon or Trump, the the general conspiracy theory, which is becoming more and more in focus and sort of clearer, is when a sort of agitator shows up into sort of the deep state and goes, what the fuck's going on with your Ukraine? What's going on with the FBI? Does it take takes ten minutes for them to find a bunch of shit on that guy and get him the fuck out oh, of there? They have it loaded up right. already. Yeah, don't ask right. questions. Yeah, so it's interesting. And again, you can look into it. Uh, Sam has got a podcast, Conspiracy Social Club, aka Deep Waters, and then also it's got live dates coming up. And you can just go to samtripoli.com for Thank all you. the live dates. Now, uh, the clip I saw on TMZ sort of encapsulated where we're at as a society right now and <clears throat> and and i think and i've been screaming into this microphone for a long time about it and everyone gets angry at me but uh chick think chick think not a good thing chick think is good for like raising kids and nurturing and you know making chick making think? A chick chick female think. Okay, yeah, female yeah. thing okay. and and so a couple things I want to be clear. Uh, I live in Los Angeles. Gavin Newsom thinks like a chick, and, and Garcetti, our mayor, thinks like a chick. These are chicks. Okay, so chick think is not limited to having a, a vulva. It's, yeah. it's, it, yeah. it, it, there's plenty of dudes yeah. with, with plenty of chick think dudes out there. Most Hollywood dudes, most actors in Hollywood, chick think. Now, I don't know if they actually think that way or they're just trying to keep their job, but it's a chick think thing. And the thing about the chick think is once it gets pervasive, like we just saw it with the nut jobs on the squad yesterday. Yep. It's like crying and caterwauling and screaming, oh! Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the, the allegation, the woman of color, there's a woman of color. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. It's they're just like, emotional. Okay. They're just they're, trying. They're emotional. Uh, we just went through it with Barbara Ferrer yep. and COVID. Yep. Uh, Rochelle Walensky. We got fucked in the ass by COVID because yeah. we had too many chicks yeah, thinking like I chicks agree. going, I got a bad feeling. I think we should close everything. That's I don't need that. I need policy. 
Adam, I don't need what chick I think thing. is like women, women make the rules of society, men make the rules of business. And what's going on is that they're trying to take these rules of society and applying it to business. Right. And, and people who do it fail miserably because it's all based on emotion. The, the homeless should be treated with dignity. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. Right. I don't know what that means, right. bitch. Right. Right. He just took a shit on my lawn. He's you smoking know? meth and jerking <laughs> off on a bus stop. <laughs> yeah. But but shouldn't everyone be treated with dignity? Shouldn't everyone have a seat what, at the table? should we tickle his balls? Help him finish? <laughs> he should seat at the table of equity. He shit on the table <laughs> of equity. It's just I, unbelievable. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And that's, oh, by the way. Okay. So that's chick think. That's dudes thinking like chicks do. And then, and, and then you have um, Megan Kelly, who's a chick who thinks like a dude. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's a two-way street. Margaret Thatcher. Chick we call those chicks like a dude. hot. I agree. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this is a good example of of chick think. It'll take a minute to get into it because some rapper, I don't know who it was, Max Zapata, but we'll play it. Just play it. So Wiz Khalifa had a wild Wiz night. Wiz Khalifa. Looks like I had a wild one last night. You ordered Taco Bell. I woke up with Taco Bell by my bed. Crunch Wrap Supreme, we got hard shells, we got cheesy gorditas. Why do we have this? Who ordered this? This is not a deep mystery, right? I mean, we yeah. kind of figured so out Wiz what happened here, right? So Wiz gets hammered. I can keep playing it and orders a bunch of Taco really, Bell. I mean, it's a really relatable Nothing wrong story. yet. No, it's not relatable. Why didn't he eat it? I mean, that's the whole point. Because a lot of times you'll order something and then just pass out. This is the best case scenario. The worst is when you order food, you fall asleep and you wake up and it's outside your yes, door. Right. And then you got to throw it away. No. I was in New York. Hold on. Like, uh, All right. We'll roll it back 10 seconds. Now we're going to end with Chick Dink. Okay. <laughs> we're going to end with Chick Dink. So far, it's Drunk Think. Yeah. I got fucked up. I ordered shit. Yeah. I passed out. I had to throw all the fucking shit away, right? That's drunk think. Yeah. Now we're going to get into chick think. And remember, they're all giving examples of how they fucked themselves because I got <laughs> I ordered a bunch of room service and then I passed out and I had to fucking throw it away. That's it. Now here's chick think. Here we go. It's not relatable. Why didn't he eat it? I mean, that's the whole point. Because a lot of times you'll order something and then just pass out. This is the best case scenario. The worst is when you order food, you fall asleep and you wake up and it's outside your door. And then you got to throw it away. I was in New York. I ordered like $100 worth of like pizza, burger. We fell asleep, woke up the next morning, and they wouldn't give gave my money back. They tried to say it was my fault because I didn't answer. It is your fault. That's totally you. You so late. I don't understand. There should be a clause. A clause? If you <laughs> yeah. order it and you fall asleep, Sleep, it's on you. What I take you a man, take back I take away take it off logic and accountability. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now Give there me is, my money back. So here's this three phases of chick think here, which is, this is 100% your fault. Yeah. But someone should do something. I said we live in a sanctuary city, and now there's a bunch of illegals selling shit on my lawn. Yeah. Someone needs to do something. Right. Like, uh, so 100%. Something happened to me. Now someone... Her thing, and we got to play the end part again because she ends it with the ultimate in chick think. First chick think is is I ordered a bunch of food, then I fell asleep, and yeah. they charged us. First piece is is what was your involvement with this, and what would you like them to do? Yeah, why is it? What where is yeah. their fault in this? They delivered it to you. They and cooked you the passed food. Out. They made it. They brought it to me. The chick think is she's pissed off. Then she makes up an imaginary clause. Yes. There should be a clause that says if we bring you a bunch of food but you pass out, then that'll be on yeah. us. Yeah. What, what kind of paperwork yeah. would be I'm involved with this? I'm an adult until I'm uh, not an adult, and yeah. then I should be able to get out of because right. I'm not an adult. But the ultimate chick think is at the end when the oh. lawyer— Speaking of adults— Brian Callen is here. Hold on, Brian. Don't say anything for 30 <laughs> seconds. Let me just finish this thing. You're in, you're in the penalty box. Yeah. The <laughs> ultimate is when the sober adult guy goes, well, what do you want? Like, what would you want them to do? Yeah. Now you hear the ultimate oh chick boy. think. Here we go. This is the best case scenario. The worst is 
scenario. The worst is when you order food, you fall asleep and you wake up and it's outside your yes, door. And then you gotta throw it away. No. I was in New York. I ordered like a hundred dollars worth of like pizza, burger. We fell asleep, woke up the next morning, and they wouldn't give my money back. They tried to say it was my fault because I didn't answer. It is your fault. That's totally we on you. So I don't understand. There should be a clause. A clause? If you order it and you fall asleep, it's on you. What do you want them to do? Take it back to the kitchen, say take it off for bills? You didn't answer? I don't know. <laughs> All right. You just saw the old, you saw yeah. how chicks think. I fucked up up royally. Somebody should do something. What do you want them to do? And absolve me of all There should be a clause or something. Well, how would this work? I don't know. Fix it. That's... We just saw the the, the triumphant of, of chick thing. <laughs> yeah, part one, I, two, and imagine three. Imagine working in that room. Like, <sighs> how do you not offend somebody with n doing nothing? I mean, it's like walking through a room of lasers, right? And to try not to get hit, <laughs> not to get any movie. kind of like, you know, male privilege, white privilege, all that. It's just unbelievable. Well, sometimes you get in an argument with you're trying to work on the substance of the problem. I want to fix the problem, right? Oh, with that, women? That's what oh, matters yeah. to me is that th there are people who want to eat my liver and the enemy's out there. So uh, how strong are our walls and can they breach the roof? That's what right, matters. Right. That's all that matters. Okay, your feelings. But now, now, now I'm trying to fix that problem and I'm being told my tone, mm -hmm. my tone <laughs> mm -hmm. is off. Yeah. And, yes. And I'm like, I understand but that's not – like, the walls are on fire, so I'm very hot right now. So yes. I need to figure out if we have a steady supply of water. Well, the theory – we're all going to die. So for, you know, 30 years, but certainly like in the last 20 years, and here's basically my, my theory. Uh, the theory is, is we've been a broken record. Like, we need more women in positions of power. Right. If we had more women making decisions, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we got it. Yeah. And it's fucking us up. It's going horrible. <laughs> it's going horribly. And my thing is, is I don't know. I never signed off on it. Like this thing of like, look, I know my mom pretty well. I don't know. I do not want her in any positions of power or making any decisions. Yeah. Now, the cities like L.A., we've gone full chick. It's, full it's chick. Out of we, control. we hired a crazy scarecrow and put her in charge of COVID. We have. We had a Garcetti who was full bitch mode all the time. We have Gavin Newsom full, and and it's a shit show. Shit show. Uh, you need to go to places that have dude thing. You're yeah. going to do much better in those in those cities. But we made a proclamation, which is we need L.A. City Councils like all women. six chicks and like one neuter dude or something. Like yeah. it's not it's not good. And and people get pissed at me, but. I, I'm sorry, the male brain is different than the female brain. Yes. And if we're going to allow, uh, we'll, how about some balance in LA is what I'm saying. It's like, how about three dudes? How about three dudes who know what it's like to roll MMA <laughs> in there? And then the three crazy gypsy yentas. I agree. And well, they were can you the at least battle with them. I think you said something I never stopped, I never stopped thinking about, which was, I, I don't know if it was you. It might have been, uh, and it was the idea that, Outlaws, you might have been talking about this. Outlaws and boys networks are the ones that create business. The business, right? Business, so yeah. Silicon yeah, we were Valley, just talking about that. right? So all those, it's always Women the make outlaws. the rules of society. Men make the rules of business, yeah. and they're trying to push this this emotion into business, yeah. and they fail miserably. Right. I was just so I, I'm <sighs> sorry, everybody. I'm late. I, I marked down one thirty, not ten thirty. Terrible excuse. The worst excuse. But I was at a meeting. Uh, I was sitting in a meeting when I got a call that, that you're supposed to do a Corolla. And uh, I was at a meeting with very, very high-functioning people, mostly Silicon Valley people. And it was a meeting about um, Buddhism, Vedanta, uh, the, the deep Eastern philosophies. And it was like kind of a chat. And I was like, I want to sit around and listen to these high-functioning. These are all people who have made way more money than I am, and they're way younger. Mm -hmm. That's always a good time. It's yeah. a good time to walk into. <laughs> oh, by the way, that's a great time to find Buddhism when you got like a billion dollars well, in yeah. the bank already, <laughs> well, and now you can be like, oh, I just want to be one with the universe. <laughs> right. So I get in there, and everybody's 35, and it's got, they all fly privately. You know, you're just sure. like, all right, well, I fail. I fail. Are they worried about climate change? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's Number like, one. I feel generally like a junkyard dog. Like, what? I got ribs on me, and right. I, I live on a bone, and I'm just in there, <laughs> and I walked into a show like it's a it's it's the ba Westminster dog show you know and all due respect to them they're all great people but they're so high functioning and what I realized is that they they just crushed the Silicon Valley world 
And then my one buddy is, he had a heart issue, so coffee didn't work for him. So he invented his own coffee drink. Mm. He invented Magic Mind, which is actually pretty amazing. But he he invents this, this mushroom thing. He's like, oh, coffee? I'm going to go beyond coffee. And now all of them are basically obsessed with this notion of, you know, Buddhism and, and, and meditation and the truth. And they're taking that space over. And they'll figure out a way to make that space completely effective and how you can kind of apply it to getting better at business, getting better at life. And yeah, do you, you know, it's an interesting phenomenon the time we're living in now. We're constantly talking about the middle class and we don't want this chasm between the, the ultra poor and the ultra elite and Food. it just keeps going. It just keeps getting wider and wider and wider. And it's like, it seems to me we're living in a world, especially in Los Angeles, of people that are like the folks you're on the conference call with today that are that never stop looking for ways to self-improve and thus yes. make money while they're offering yes. something. And then the rest of everyone is just getting fatter and dumber and yeah. uglier yeah. and less educated. And this chasm, this this dream of this middle part, it's it's gone. It, yeah, they, these people are a very kind, it, like they are elite, but they're very kind and super ambitious about making the world a better place. Right. But but the tr don't make no mistake, first of all, it is still run by guys. Right. That movement, the spiritual movement, run by dudes. Now, oh, interesting. I, yeah. I do a spiritual podcast. There's a lot of hot chicks in it, but, you know, I mean, because... <laughs> yeah, but the, the cult leader's always the dude who's... who's yeah. He's got the beads, the ponytail, the sandals. Yeah. He's talking enlightenment, but at the end of the day, he's selling his cock. You know what I mean? Like, at the he end of the day... He also <laughs> wants you to listen to him play a guitar. Yeah. Oh, wait. And he that's what's that that's kind captive, of price of admission, that right? That captive audience. Yes, or the flute. The flute is when you're dealing with a real <laughs> guru. I learned early, because my dad... Dad is that guy, and he plays the trumpet, but no one would ever yeah. buy a ticket to watch him play the or listen to him play the trumpet. So what he does is he's, he'll smuggle the trumpet in, and he'll go, like, having a Super Bowl party? I'll be like, yeah, okay, I'll bring my trumpet. It's like, now he's playing to an audience. A trumpet? <laughs> he'll bring his trumpet. He used to. He's like 92 That's, now. But he used is... to bring his trumpet everywhere and, and then foist it on my audience, the people who showed up to the show. That, that, that's, a, up that's, the a, house. that's amazing because you can't, you can't ignore a trumpet. Like if somebody comes in, starts playing a guitar slowly, you're you like, keep walking. it's yeah. background music. Right. If somebody breaks out a trumpet, you're not, <laughs> right. you're not ignoring that guy. <laughs> that's no. my dad. Everything stops and you have to watch that guy. No, I'm like, <laughs> couldn't you fucking pitch Amway and have some dignity with this group? Do you have to right. annoy them with your trumpet? Trumpet. Even the dog perks up and stands there watching. <laughs> Who's the guy doing? Yes, he, he would annoy everybody you know, with his trumpet. What's but next going back recording? to what you guys were talking about in terms of like women running everything, it's like if you take a look at this last election, uh, nobody can name the Republican who ran for governor. Right. We had two Democrats running for mayor, yeah. you know, and, and like no matter how, everybody up to the election, man, there's too much crime. Prices are too high. Gas is too high. Bang. Still vote for the same people got you no, because wait. you're emotionally <clears throat> invested in your team. You've turned politics into sports, which is hilarious because women hate sports. But yet <laughs> their sport <laughs> is politics. They they emotionally well, invest in the something. We had a older white dude who was a commercial developer, and then we had a longtime governmental black chick, and we just voted the chick in. Yeah. Which is exactly my point. And the homeless, whatever, doesn't get better. The eggs are eight bucks a cart. It's nothing, nothing improved. Now, the bigger question is, what? Why do we think? Because I, <clears throat> I used to talk about it with Dr. Drew all the time. He would say twenty years ago, he's changed his tune. He used to say twenty years ago, we need more women in these positions. <laughs> I grew up with this. If we had a woman president, we'd have no wars. You right. know, we'd That's have so tranquility. Bullshit. We'd people be holding <laughs> hands and giving everyone a coke and teaching the world to sing. We had some sort of bullshit <laughs> notion of think about how the utopia we would be living in if we got more of this. And it, you know, at the at the risk of sounding like totally misogynistic, what we need is a balance. And 100%. Cities like San yes. Francisco and LA and Portland, and Oregon, New York. New York and Sa Seattle, Washington, the balance is off. The balance it's is tilted when... toward the Mass and Gale Isle. Yeah, but that's that... what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and you see Mayor Adams 
And in New York, he's a chick. He's yeah. got yeah. 18 bracelets. He's talking oh, he's like, about I used equity. to be a cop. And now, yeah. did you hear, and now I'm a chick. <laughs> did you hear Jordan Peterson's explanation for this? It's pretty fascinating. He said, the psychologists were talking about this. They were saying that when a woman, and all due respect, but when a woman is gets to a certain age and doesn't have children, or if a woman uh, doesn't have children important. In, de- yes. in, in general, what they will do is a woman's... Uh, this is um, this is not me. But this is this would be the the literature with clinical psychology. The data. The idea is the, the idea would be as a woman, what makes you think your central nervous system evolved to serve you? It didn't. It serve. It's evolved to serve your child, right? right? So when a woman walks into a room with a toddler, if you've ever seen it, she has to see all the dangers. You'll never see it. She's looking at sharp objects. She's looking at everything. Then she's got to imagine the danger. Is there a, right. is there a creepy uncle in a room yeah. somewhere? Do you have a gun in the house? Yeah. Is, the, is that dog nervous? Yeah. Is there a pool? Is there a door open? She's got to do it all, right? right? right. That, that in itself is... So a woman, when she has a child, is programmed to think in a binary way, which is predator prey my right. baby is very vulnerable right. and there are predators out there that want to kill my baby so i have to keep the man comes in and, and he doesn't notice any of that he's like is that your truck in the driveway yeah. right? right that's how we are so when you take that instinct which is hardwired in a woman thank god to keep us alive right a baby alive predator prey my baby's prey everything else is a potential danger when you don't have a baby in that equation, and now she's been put in charge of public policy, and she doesn't have kids, or it's only women in that sort of echo chamber, in that ecosystem, they, there is a tendency, at least the theory goes, whether it's in academia, whether it's in public policy, to turn the world into predator prey. Right. So we have to protect the vulnerable and all the rest of that, the patriarchy, and men in general are a threat and they're dangerous. Uh, and the only way to be safe is to say, you may not be dangerous, but I have to imagine that maybe in the dark recesses of your mind, you might be a psycho. I don't know if you're Dr. Jekyll. I don't know if you're Mr. Hyde. And so everything becomes dangerous. Everybody come, becomes a threat. In my opinion, that's where demonizing competent, powerful men happens. You've got to take them out of the equation. Especially if you didn't have a productive relationship this with is, a man. This is what you bring to the show, Brian Callen. I will tell um, Ben you know over me. there, if you want to see Chick think in action, and we can watch the re- rest of Rochelle Walensky having a bad feeling and then speaking as a mother mm-hmm. about being scared. But you find Sotomayor and Supreme Court Justice Sotomayor uh, six months ago, I don't know, a year ago, they were talking about Just having— lo- we're having vax mandates. Like so, basically, they said, "Let the Supreme Court yep. decide whether everyone needs to be vaccinated, or they will lose their job, or they won't be able to be commercial airline pilots, or be thrown out of the military, or any employer with more than ninety nine employees will be shut down by the government." Yep. Let's let her figure it out and them figure it out. But I want to hear what she's got to think about this. And then she went full crazy batshit chick yeah. mode yeah. and started lying about ventilators and numbers and stuff. Perfect example of crazy chick thing. And by the way, you up. go, look, when you see that fucking chick at the Whole Foods in Santa Monica, yeah. you just take your cart and go down the next open yeah. aisle. Yeah. She's making policy for the entire country. She wanted all of us to be forced to get a vaccination that we didn't need that could prove to be harmful so that my kid who doesn't need the vaccination could return to school and I could return yeah. to work and everything else. And she did it all based on crazy, nutty chick yeah. thing. Her algorithm right. is lying to her. And we're seeing that more and more where people just aren't getting the information. And they're just regurgitating this BS that their algorithm is showing right. them. And we all, now look, she's not going to change her crazy, batshit, fucked up, crazy gypsy thinking. <laughs> all you cuckolded pusses out there, fucking stand up. Would yeah. you fucking I say agree, something? Well, say something, the pussies. The idea behind our government is that. That's where the checks and balances happen. The problem is when you get a Democratic supermajority or you get, uh, like in the humanities and academia, only women, where men are exiting in droves because they're pushed out and there's zero, zero pushback. There's zero. People are not reading any of the the original conservative thinkers. Forget the, like, Republican. I'm talking about conservative, like, traditional liberal thinkers. Shouldn't, uh, shouldn't. We have some sort of Supreme Court rule when you lie with 
and completely screw the pooch on one where you have to sit out the next That's decision. That's hilarious. A penalty box? <laughs> yeah, you just go, oh, now, next up, we got the gay cake baker from Denver versus uh, uh, the gay guy who wanted the gay cake and whatever. And Sotomayor goes, I have strong pitch, sweetie. You got to sit this one out. Yeah. Oh, well, why do I have to sit out? Uh, 100,000 kids on ventilators? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sit this I, one out. We don't, you- we don't like your brain. Can I give you a can I give you though a stat that's interesting? Mm-hmm. So in countries where women were given equal rights and where women were given legal rights, reproductive rights and all that over their own bodies and everything, that that those are the countries where healthcare made the most strides. Cuz oh. men are dirty. Men don't give a shit. When you're you, you my son would never take a shower or take never take a shower or brush his teeth. I'm telling you it's hardwired. He doesn't give a shit what he smells like. My I'll tell you my son smells like bad cologne. He smells like an, an Armenian Uber driver when he leaves the <laughs> hey, house the every day. <laughs> oh, you drive Uber too? <laughs> you were on time. No, he, he wants to sh- he doesn't want to shower so badly that yeah. he just sprays it on. Yeah. So he doesn't, yeah. he's so funky yeah. that he covers it up. Yeah, with, my daughter's been taking four hour showers. I, right. I used to have to go in there and be like, hey, the far, I would literally go, the farmer, the farm union called, you're using <laughs> yeah. all their water. Your irrigation it was the only water. way I could get her to turn her water off. I need real. almonds. Yeah. Um, what is really weird is like how these women who like I, I'm now 50 and I've been out here for a while and I've watched some people go from open micers to these humongous comedians and they did everything they thought they were supposed to do. They got all the dreams they ever wanted. They didn't have kids, and they're miserable. They're just miserable people. And to make it worse, their misery, they're just lying to younger generations of female comedians. You, you see them just telling them, like, oh, you don't need kids. You don't need to be. You're miserable. Yes. You're, why are you giving anybody advice on yes. what you should be doing when yes. we all know you're miserable? Yeah. Why does misery love company? Why are you Why are you keeping the, the, the narrative going? Tell them the truth. I'm miserable. I wish I would have had kids. You should maybe try to have kids. And it's like the women who get to a certain age and don't have kids, they hate children. Like, the hatred is so weird. Yeah. It's almost like serial killer level that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, except for Bill Maher. He's super happy. With <laughs> yeah. Every time I talk to him, he tells me how happy he is. Uh, we have Soda Maher. We have this uh, crazy. All right. This is Chick Think. At the, this is at the highest level. This isn't this is the great. crazy Yenta yeah. at the Glendale School Board who's yeah. got a bad feeling about this is COVID. This a high-level lawyer. This is, she's, gonna, she's fighting hard. To make sure we all get vaccinated against our will. Incredible. All right, here we go. Those numbers show that Omicron um, is as deadly uh, and causes as much serious disease in the unvaccinated as Delta did. We have over 100,000 children, which we've never had before, in in serious condition. Why? And uh, many on ventilators. Wrong. Wrong. All, All of that's a lie. All right, so she's... Oh, now, that's stupid a lie. or liar? No, I, no, is no, she we'll lying? Hold. But she's setting yeah. policy yeah. based on yeah. false data. Yeah. Yeah. What was... if I did that with Africanized killer bees? Yeah. We got to put a net yeah. up between Texas and Arizona <laughs> and the California yeah. border. Like, why? Killer bees yeah. but coming she, this way. I like, guarantee she was given that in, that that those stats by either the CDC or the World Health Organization or someone. Look. There was an incentive. I cannot believe this, but if you look at the seven levels of incentive that hospitals were given, including a bonus for marking down a death by COVID, yes, you would be. It's it's shocking. I think Alex Berenson uh, uh, did something on this. The, this is the guy that got sued for printing true stuff on. I mean, uh, who got banned from Kicked Twitter, Twitter for yeah. printing. Like the, the science about COVID, the truth about COVID, and then he got banned. He got reinstated. He won this case, but at the end of the day, that 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 kind of stuff, when when you create an incentive structure to lie, yep. people who died of a car accident but had COVID were marked down as death from COVID. That's yeah, a that's fact. a COVID death. Yeah. Yes. So. We've, we, th- there's got to be a reckoning to well, that. Not, not, hold on. Not, not to I don't want to shit on your point, but <clears throat> yep. they didn't count George Floyd as a COVID <laughs> death. <laughs> that was definitely not counted. Right. So I can oh, back one, right? That's, back one out okay, of there because right. he had COVID and they did yeah, not yes. count him. That's yes. the only 100%. person. And fentanyl. <laughs> 
and, right. and only, speed. I don't know how you do fentanyl and person. speed at the same then, time. But then he's having the a 170 pound guy on your neck for nine minutes isn't oh, going to help okay. either. Anyway. No, it's not going to help, but they didn't count. Well, yes, let's also count. talk yeah. about the fact that you saw these nurses on TikTok, not the dancing ones, but going, hey, they're giving everybody remdesivir. Why are they doing that? And then you study remdesivir and you're like, oh, this is an Ebola drug that had a 50% fatality rate. Why are we giving it to them? And then you have to ask a question, like, were they trying to create inflated numbers so we would all bend over backwards to save ourselves? Look in the remdesivir. Dude, why is that being given to people for COVID? Why is that, Why is ESPN running a ticker, oh, this guy, he got COVID? No, we would never do that. Imagine if they did that with stubbing toes. Everybody who ever stubbed their toe, we saw it on ESPN. We'd be like, dude, there's a, we got to get rid of this table. You might stub your toe. Stamps animated. Yeah, but it, it's good for numbers when CNN runs the ticker right. of, of, of all the deaths, which were also not true. But that that's good for ratings, Well, man. CNN, I, did we run the old guy clip, or is that just the CNN's old old guy call the old people that died in the nursing homes on CNN I don't clip think we on did. this show? No. Uh, you can find it. Gary will find it. It wasn't even a ticker. It was like half the screen. Uh, this is the greatest CNN clip of, of all time that I caught. I would catch everything in real time and then come in here and make fun of it, and everyone else was kind of slid under the radar but we have we have well i'll tell you what we should do we should we should take a break and then we'll uh come back with brian and sam and we'll keep screaming right after this <laughs> well i want to thank o'reilly auto parts for climbing on board in 2023 you know i love cars to me they're like my children I'm, i have a truck i got an suv i got sports cars i got race cars and they're all cars that's the key. And if you love cars, then you got to love O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's O Rewards Bonus Points Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Shop in store or online to get points and rewards sent straight to your phone or inbox. Get two, three, or even four times bonus points on select purchases to get you to your next reward even faster. Receive a $5 reward for every 150 O Rewards points. If you're already an O Rewards member and not receiving your rewards, just add your email or mobile phone number and get a $10 reward for updating your existing account. Sign up is quick and easy at O'ReillyAuto.com or you can do it in store. That's O'ReillyAuto.com. As we approach 14 years of podcasting, here's a memorable moment from the Ace Awards archives. All right, coming back with a voicemail when you're ready. All right. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Adam, I just want to give you some good news. I went to the opening of Road Hard and met you afterwards last year. And I was just coming out of my divorce and I was worried about life. And you put a hand on my shoulder and you told me, you're young and you're pretty. You'll be fine. And I want to update you that things are great. And the reason they're great is because I have discovered black dick. And it is awesome. And it's coming at me left and right. So life is good. So you were right once again, Adam. You're the best. Now for some new memorable moments, let's get back to the Adam Carolla show. Feel like for like most white chicks, if you're if you're willing to walk through the black dick door, there's a never ending stream of black dick. Yes. It's sort of like when a when Peter North says, "Fine, I'll do gay porn," yeah. you'll now work for another. You just added twenty years <laughs> a treasure on trust. on to your career. When I yeah. do the road, when I do the road, the number one person who gets upset in the show is white chick dating black guys because mm. they all think they're civil rights leaders. <laughs> <laughs> they all act like they're a con- like as a woman, as a white woman who dates black men. Uh, I'm like, love it. you're not special. But you know, it, it's got to be. A, a real windfall. Like, these are the salad days for being a black dude. Because yeah. if you think about it, and I, I mean, I don't care if this sounds offensive. It, it, it's 100% true because I've just decided it shall be true in my head. 
Uh, we lived in a country where in the 60s and the 70s, even 50s, certainly, whatever, you're a black dude. You wanted to date the blonde chick, but there's way too much attached to that. The, the blonde chick may have loved you, but you couldn't go out in public. Yeah. Her dad was blah, blah, blah. It's never going to work, blah, blah, blah. So there were a lot of lonely black dudes who could have dated white chicks, just like there were a lot of gay guys that were in the closet who couldn't come out, whatever, whatever. Now you're being celebrated, yeah, right? So the black dude is just getting his dick sucked by the blonde chick. She might not even like black dudes, just like all the fucking 14-year-olds that are trans now. Like, are they even trans? I don't know. They're being celebrated, right. so they're all going that way. So a lot of black dudes getting their dick sucked by white chicks who may have formerly never dated a black dude, not liked a black dude, not been into black dudes, now are because they love to be celebrated and talk about it well, and show how progressive they are. Also, or, or, this is good. Or, this is a reparation. Or, I mean, listen, I, my wife dated black athletes in college. Let's just take that in for a second, everybody. Yeah. And I've seen pictures of those black athletes. So Brian's and regentrifying her vagina. I'm just, <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I saw a picture of how good looking those men were. And I even saw a picture of one on the Instagram with no shirt on. And I thought to myself, and I remember just looking at her, I go, so you, you went from from that to this, and you know, yeah, because you're I'm settled not, down, nice. guy. I, I'm just saying, that's I mean, shop it's guy. Like, it's like, yeah, it's like you go from riding a dolphin to rowing a boat, yeah. right? Right. You know what I mean? I'm like, but it doesn't go the other way. <laughs> you get tired of riding a dolphin though, because you get wet. <laughs> yeah. And so, it's I too much. Right you definitely now. get wet. So right. People get, get you wet. get too wet. You get damp. I, I got super boys right now where people get really mad, but I like black chicks, but I like really dark black chicks, mm -hmm. and people get, I like like deep space black, that's mm -hmm. what I'm into, mm -hmm. and they get really quiet well, on stage. We've all, your show just got canceled. <laughs> Why? I, Why I, is that offensive? I like I black chicks too. That. I like black chicks. I love them. And if you say you like really dark skinned black chicks, everybody gets quiet. If I say I like blonde women, I was like, yeah, blondes are great. If I'm like, I like Senegal blood diamond black, people get really quiet. And I don't understand it. Well, so, Brian, what, according to my theorem, if you and yeah. your wife go your separate ways. Yeah. And she ends up with Michael B. Jordan. Yes. Then she's grandfathered in. And not only she's that, she's not a. Yeah, a but I can't. And Sally, what, come lately. Yes, and and you have to understand. In that case, I'm I'm a realist. What I say is, I go. I understand. Uh, why would you want to be with narrow and gray, right, or medium and wrinkled when you could have, you know, right, uh, that basically dolphin. what looks like a black Ferrari. Yes. Right? Yes. I don't. I don't blame. There are a lot of guys, this is going to be a shock, guys, but there are a lot of guys who are better looking than I am. Not even, even naked. In the room? Statistically, yeah, statistically, not many. Thank you, Adam. That's I think wherever you for. get pregnant in is the phase you're stuck in for the rest of your life, right? Like if you get knocked up by a drummer in a band, you're always banging ba rock guys, right? If you yeah. get knocked up by a black guy, <laughs> that's always your, your, your phase for the rest of your life. Or you just have a tight. Mm. Right? Or, you or what if it's a drummer in. from the roots and you're in both? Oh, oh damn. damn. <laughs> you're checking all the boxes. Awesome. Black you're and the drummer. Most woke you're being stuck ever. there. <laughs> all right, we got this CNN clip, which I, again, I can't remember the date, but it just, uh, Ben can look the date, or everyone should always look the date as previously discussed. Um, do we have the date? No. Um, CNN, by so the way, here's suffering a, their here's lowest a, ratings in nine years. Here's a I got yeah, tip for uh, Dawson and Ben. Always try to find the date. Remember that part? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a while just, back. Just do it. You got it. Right, or write it down, I guess. Write the, not this date, but write down, look for the date. Yeah, well, this, were, this was the primary thing. Does she have a choker on, by the way? She, I think, I can't tell. Anyway, this is CNN explaining tugging at our heartstrings, but let's let's see if we can work the average age of the person claimed by COVID in this very hard-hitting CNN piece. Numbers here are difficult to fathom, but these are people, these are families, and a new Tampa Bay Times investigation on the haunting toll of an outbreak inside of just one nursing home really drives home the human impact of this virus. In the span of just a month, Margaret Lally died on April 20th of COVID-19. The next day, Jean Lazar 96. died. 96. So 90. did Donald Jack, uh -uh. who was 75. a 
The following day, Christopher Pugh died. 84. And then 48 hours later, Susan Jones. 78. The next day, Eleanor Schooneman passed away. 94. Along with Jeanette DeFrank. <laughs> Two days after that. All right, pause it for Donna a second. Right. The average age Americans die is like 79, yeah, that's 77 right. in four months. Death yeah. is better at killing than COVID. They're all after the yeah. average... Yeah. I'm not sure what your point you're trying to drive home here. See, I that's, would like. I hope my dad gets COVID so we can go to 94. 94 that- years old. That's incredible. 96. What are they? T- this is collective madness. <laughs> it's well, first the madness off, of crowds. W- listen, I've been in this position where they go, "Why don't we do? Uh, <clears throat> why don't we do a, a spot on uh, how uh, flying private sucks and how everyone hates whales?" And I'd be like, "I." I don't know what you're talking about. Like, that doesn't make sense. We're doing a thing on a nursing home where the average age is 170 years old. I'd be yeah. like, B- what point are we making? Yeah. Well, that, that COVID is horrible. <laughs> yeah, but COVID is horrible. We need some teenagers sprinkled into the mix. Not yeah. a bunch of people who yeah, die want some young hot later. chicks die, and then we'll care. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, but they, but they, haven't, they have 24 hours to fill. When you have 24 I, hours to fill, you're in trouble. You well, got, you'll you'll yeah, find But that's anything. not it, This is from, this is from the December 2020. All right, we'll keep it going because it just it, it gets insane. Same. Almost reached her goal to live to 100 years old. <laughs> oh wait, go, you got to go back. <laughs> you always got to go back 10 I seconds. I love that they ben. took a Sorry. chance to take a picture of her in a mask before she died. Right, right before you go out, you, know, you get the date and always go back 10 seconds. Incredible. All right. Died. Who almost reached her goal to live to? Oh, and now Jones. something happened. The next day, Eleanor Schooneman passed away 94. along with Jeanette DeFrank. Two days after that, Donna Mortensen died, who almost reached her goal to live to 100 years old. Four <laughs> so people close. died the next day. Hold One on. Them was are these Stevenson. giant sea turtles or are these <laughs> <laughs> people whose average death is in their late 70s? Yeah. She had a goal. Hey. You know what my it's goal incredible. is? I'm going for 150. It's incredible. <laughs> Who wants a cigarette? She, she was 99. She died. But, but her goal. Took her, COVID took her But out. she almost reached her goal. <laughs> His pictures people, aren't helping. His people go not helping. to nursing homes to die. Yeah. That's what yeah. why you, you, a, need, you need. To, someone needs to physically turn you over in your bed and wipe your ass. That's why you, you go there to die. Devastation at this hospice. It's, oh. a, <laughs> it's a sketch. <laughs> this is a sketch. <laughs> All right. Here, we'll keep it going. Frank, two days after that. Donna Mortensen died, who almost reached her goal to live to 100 years old. Four people died the next day. One of them was Sue Stevenson. The Times reports that her daughter tried to lift her spirits with FaceTime calls, but her mom could barely speak, oh. only able to respond, I love you, bye. That's how everyone dies. Emily Sudol <laughs> died an hour after Sue Se- uh, Stevenson. A Korean War veteran temporarily in the facility recovering 1950 from a fall, to 1951. still lived in his home. Wow. And enjoyed meeting friends for beers at their local bar. <laughs> Not long after that, George Egolf died, as did Anthony Fabrizio. Marjorie Blackman, a nurse at the home, was put on a ventilator. There's a great her one daughter coming. begged for blood plasma for her mom on Facebook. This is Tamara holding a photo of her mom. Yes, people Marjorie died. Marjorie died just a day later. Eunice Angeloni was a Londoner. Oh my God, she met her husband, Ronaldo, during World War II. She was an American oh, hold soldier. Hold on, hold on. And eventually on. she came. We need, we need a clean Eunice. We need to go back 10 seconds. We need to hear where Eunice met her husband. <laughs> All right, let's see where she met her husband. This is 2000 and this is the end of 2020. This, this is, is 2021. The world, the world went crazy. This is 2021. <laughs> let's see where you It's very sad. We all we all weep openly for Eunice, 95-year-old Eunice. <laughs> Anyone named Eunice could be taken at any she time. She was the last. All Eunice, I didn't even, well, Eunice, was, all the Eunice, Eunice was a name given you in 18... If your name is Gertrude or Eunice, yeah. let's get you off Not the planet. Good. Yeah. Right, you were born in the Enlightenment. Here, let's see where Eunice met her husband. Eunice Angeloni was a Londoner. She met her husband, Grimaldo, during World War II. He was an American soldier. And eventually, she came back to America with him to raise a family. Okay, she World War II ended in 1945. That's right. <laughs> ended. That's right. That's right. If it's she met her right. husband, she was an uh, uh, adult. She was, she's been married 85 years, something like that. Uh, <laughs> uh. But but CNN is doing a hard hitting piece on yeah. the tragedy of COVID because a bunch of people who average 91 and a half have died in a nursing home. Yeah. She because met her husband of COVID. In 1975 years ago. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got to keep it going because the, what, there's a part where a guy liked doing magic, but mm. guess what? 
You know, Bob Saget oh, yeah. liked doing yeah, yeah. stand up. Who did guess him. who doesn't get to do stand up anymore? Yeah. I like sushi. Right. After I die. No, no sushi. Guess who gets Adam to not eat sushi? sushi. <laughs> California. He likes to do. By the way, if you're if you're 95 oh, and you like doing magic, you're a oh, nerd. It's, huh? it's good. You get Keep all the ass in yeah. the old home if you do yeah. magic. Keep get it that going. guy out of my home. Eunice, 95. Here Angeloni we go. Angeloni was a Londoner. She met her husband from Aldo during World War II. He was an American soldier, and eventually she came back to America with him to raise a family. She died on April 30th. Two days later, Avis Lilly. 98? So did Constance Bettler. 85? She told her daughter, I don't want to live anymore. I've tried. I'm done. 48 <laughs> hours later, Alice Ford died. Incredible. Louise Johnson that's passed your last away words. the next day, as did Harry Nash, who was a local bookshop owner who spent a lot of his time usually winning chess matches there. The next day, Beverly Dickman died. Oh, no. 24 86. hours later, five people died, including... Russell Doughton. Uh -huh. He was a magician uh -huh. who was still performing balloon animal shows twice a week. That's creepy. <laughs> Right. He's, like a, 92. Like a He's, He's 92. He's like a clown. Why are they putting the ages? I, what the <laughs> fuck is CNN doing? <laughs> what are they, do what are they doing? What what is what here's message what I think, are they? Here's conveying? what I think happened. I think all of them died like in 15 minutes, which <laughs> that is but what significant. about the balloon animals? Yeah, well, the balloon uh -huh. animals. That's a bummer, but but. <laughs> But uh, I think my feeling is that maybe in this group, uh. people die once every three days. And in this case, they all died like, and that is what COVID did. What so. if there right. were people just weren't interesting? They didn't have any hooks, so they didn't even mention them. Like, they didn't have a magic trick. Well, or... the bar's pretty low, because ironically, <laughs> the one guy just liked drinking. <laughs> like, yeah. Going to the yeah. bar. He liked, yeah. Jelly. He liked yeah. to go to the bar the and pub. drink. Like, wow. Yeah, dude, what a terrible <laughs> I don't picture. use the word noble yeah. that often, but uh, I'm going to bust it out for this guy. Like to go yeah. drink. Can uh. you imagine that? He liked to do animal balloon tricks for, uh, for, for other people who'd seen animals. Everything in life. Everything. <laughs> That's just hell. <laughs> Guys, I know you've lived 93 years and done everything. Watch this. I'm gonna you ever see a poodle? You're, you're in a nursing home. Who's blowing up those balloons? Not you. You have no life in your lungs. Yes. I would steal his balloons. I would beat that guy up. I would if, if I was a fellow nursing home person, I would <laughs> All right. Well, that's where we were. I tease it. it seems insane. Unbelievable. It's insane. So, we're we're looking. We look at clips that are eighteen months old, two months old, yeah. and go, "What the fuck were we? Yeah. What was going on?" Yeah. But the bigger picture is what I was screaming about this nonstop. All the clips we're looking at are ones I looked at in real time and screamed about. What yeah. the fuck happened to everybody? I did a show last night on this uh, uh, bell, uh, uh, this top floor. This uh, it was like a hotel. They had like a, uh, 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 they were like holding the parties up there, and it was a CNN party. Was uh, CNN was having a party there, and I'm like, what are they celebrating? They're like, literally, they said they're celebrating like the end of uh, like integrity in reporting. Oh, I'm like, yeah. do we really want to be on a roof where they can all jump off when they look <laughs> at what their ratings are? Yeah, their ratings are the lowest. Nine years. It was a rooftop party, yeah. Well, that yeah. that does bring me to the other clip, which is, and uh, you guys are sort of uniquely qualified to answer this, which is, you know, speaking of CNN, so all you have to, I did Tucker Carlson's show yesterday, and he it was in the green room, and he was, sh they show these clips, and, and they show these clips like Wolf Blitzer's talking to uh, Adam Schiff about uh, Hunter Biden's laptop, and I understand what, what, what Adam Schiff is doing. He's a congenital liar. He's shilling liar. for the Democrats. He, he doesn't, his soul, he's not interested in his reputation or soul, and he'll just look into, down any camera and just lie his ass off. Fine, that's that's what he's doing. He's a he's a dude who got pulled over, and the cop asked, you've been drinking, and he had been drinking. He, Officer, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, and I would never have a, any yeah. alcohol. Yeah. Uh, okay, he's doing what he does. I don't, I, in, a, in a weird way, I don't blame him anymore, and I blame the guy who got pulled over and is lying to the cop. Yeah. He lies. That's fine. Wolf Blitzer is a celebrated journalist. And I, I mean, I got onto him with Desert Storm or whatever. And I was like, this guy's got integrity. What the fuck happened to him? And then is he lying or is Wolf Blitzer stupid? And why is he willing to play so fast and loose with his soul and his integrity? Like, I don't listen to Wolf Blitzer anymore because I think mm. he's full of shit. But I used to listen to Wolf Blitzer. Why are they doing this with their reputation? I'll I'll play the uh, clip. I think probably the idea that there's an enemy out there that's more dangerous. 
Yes. Right? I think that's it. That, that's what happens right. when you go, we're at war. We're going yeah, to do questionable things, yeah, but it's well, worth it. Well, because, the French resistance. Yeah. Here's you can just say because dude. Donald Trump. You can just yeah, say that. I, well, I think so. What happened is, is that the internet now is so much more powerful than when Desert Store happened. So you didn't have independent journalists going... Dude, here's the real information. Now they're competing with the internet that's happening in real time where you're getting people like Whitney Webb or Jimmy Dore and all these guys putting out this amazing information. And you're like, okay, here's this informa- information. Oh, Wolf Blitzer is lying to my face. So now you're like, so when you go back and we go, oh, Wolf Blitzer was telling the truth during Desert Storm. Was he? Or was he just allowed to lie oh, a lot yeah. more freer back then? It wasn't then. released that's as a, much as the internet. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. No, you're right. You maybe right. he, maybe Maybe the Kennedy assassination, maybe the Nixon stuff. Maybe it's just it's been going on for perpetuity. Yeah. All right. We'll play the clip just so you can have have a laugh. This is a uh, him and Adam Schiff is going to get to the bottom of this old uh, Hunter Biden laptop thing. <sighs> By the way, do we have do we have the emails from uh, Hunter's lawyer part? As long as we're doing Did the you guys get you guys got email? It's, it's excellent. No, no, his. Remember, the laptop doesn't exist, but Hunter Biden's lawyers sent. Uh, a, a note to the guy who owns the Mac store saying uh, you cannot spread anything that's on the Hunter Biden laptop around. And then everyone's like, well, I thought it didn't exist. Yeah, and then yeah, he, yeah. Re- he rephrased it a little bit, said it doesn't exist. But if you have something, you can. Yeah, no yeah. pictures. So here's yeah. uh, here's Adam Schiff, who who has his privy to Intel. Yeah. So he'd probably have a better idea whether this thing existed or not. But let's hear him. But mainly focus on uh, Wolf Blitzer in his situation. He's in the situation room, and he's gonna—he's in the room that has the situation, and he's going to get to the bottom of it. So he's let's constantly hear. walking into a situation. What is the situation here? <laughs> he speaks fast. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of situations going off in yeah. that room, and he's going to get to the bottom of it. So Wolf's <laughs> Every gonna... time he walks in, it's just a shit show. I think Wolf Blitzer used to be responsible for the propaganda Oh, God, I, I don't know. I might get this wrong. He worked for the Israeli lobby, APAC. Oh, really? And he oh, was yeah. responsible for their... Well, I have to look Dual into system. that. Somebody look into that. All Probably. right. What Let's see. Job? Here it is. <clears throat> Federal authorities, including the FBI, are investigating whether recently published emails that purport to deal... Uh, to, to detail, I should say, the business dealings of Joe Biden's son, Hunter, are connected to an ongoing Russian disinformation effort targeting the Biden campaign in the days leading up to the election. Let's discuss with the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Adam Schiff. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. Does it surprise you at all that this information Rudy Giuliani is peddling uh, very well could be connected to some sort of right, Russian pause government? pause it for a second. So just saying he peddling. says peddling. Just he peddling. said the word peddling. Right. We now know he's been compromised. One hundred percent. Rudy Giuliani's been peddling. Yes. Now, first off, you can just say... The laptop, does it exist? Is it Russian propaganda? Yeah. But he takes the cl- the biggest clown on the right, Rudy Giuliani, and he says he's been peddling it. Yep, yep. And it's like you're already setting a narrative That's for right. your situational room where you're trying to get to the bottom of the situation in the room, except for you're already pushing, you're already serving up a fucking softball. Correct. To yeah, this if this guy. was a trial, you know, you'd strike that right. because he's leading a witness. Right. All right. Sorry. Here we go. Does it surprise you at all that this information Rudy Giuliani is peddling uh, very well could be connected to some sort of Russian government disinformation campaign? Wow. Well, we know that this whole uh, smear on Joe Biden uh, comes from the Kremlin. Uh, That's been clear for well over a year now that they've been pushing this uh, false narrative about the vice president and his son. Uh, And, you know, the idea that the president... Um, that the White House counsel and others were made aware that Giuliani was being used by Russian intelligence uh, and using Russian intelligence in the sense of meeting with an agent of the Kremlin and pushing out this Kremlin false narrative. The idea that they were knowing uh, and still on the floor of the Senate during the impeachment trial uh, pushing this Kremlin narrative is pretty breathtaking. But I guess at this point, we can't be shocked by anything this administration does, no matter how craven. Uh, But clearly, the origins of this whole uh, smear uh, are from the Kremlin. And the president is only too happy to have Kremlin help in in trying to amplify it. 
It's not it's like amazing. Rudy Giuliani is peddling this information in a vacuum, uh, Congressman. Take a look at this picture all of the right, president. Right, of the let's old, pause old, it for a second. If Wolf Blitzer had any journalistic integrity at all, he'd say, well, you brought up the Kremlin 15 times. Yeah. Seems like only yesterday you brought up the Kremlin 17,000 times with Russian disinformation and Trump and the election and all that. Uh, you talked all the way through that four-year span about how you had new information, how we're about to blow the lid off this thing, how it was all Russian. And nothing. all the reports came back and there's nothing. nothing. So now we're going to take another lap around Kremlin Park with the guy who never stopped talking about the Kremlin <laughs> yeah. for fucking four years. And I'm not going to push back at all. Now, yeah. well, I, again, now listen, everyone, whatever you want to say about anything. Do not get your information from these people or get it and then go find out what other people who have been kicked off of Twitter have to say. Yeah, but That's this all. is this is exactly why people just don't trust the mainstream media. We have a podcast. You think so, except for if you talk to dingbats, they yeah. have no fucking That's idea. The they have How no idea. Yeah, they have but, no idea. But time when people are losing their businesses and stuff, the, the, the main thing is there are people like this who pay no price for being wrong. Right. That's a huge issue for me. Right. They, they don't pay a price for this. Adam Schiff goes on, and now he's getting, you know, he's, he's having trouble with the, 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 you know, the house and stuff, but not really. He holds his position. Wolf Blitzer holds his position, and they just go on to the next topic. You're allowed to control a narrative. You're allowed to push a narrative forward, and all it does What's is— What's Wolf Blitzer think he's doing? Is he just go, I'm smart, <clears throat> I'm fucking— Carrying water no, for think, the left. Think, I'm compromised. Fuck it. I'll say whatever yeah, they Wolf tell Blitzer, me to say. No. Or is he go, I'm liar a journalist. Look, stupid or liar? No, stupid or liar. Which one is Wolf It's not Blitzer? even that. It's not even that. Well, it's got to be he's one or the other. He's been corrupted by the very nature of what he does for how long he's been doing it and for how comfortable he's been. So does he think there is no Hunter Biden laptop? I, I, I think he, I, you know, like you remember Rachel Meadow when she was like, you know, she she was like singing the praises of the Fox News president that died. It's they're all involved in it. it's it's they're all playing a game. They're all part of the system. No, no, no. But, and they're propagandists. They, that that's their job. But, they're, they are there. They know this so paycheck. Wolf Blitzer but, says I'm a propagandist no, 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 no. when you Blitzer, get him drunk. No, Wolf Blitzer. No. Wolf Blitzer. Yeah, Blitzer, I think no. he, I think he goes. I, I, no. I don't think it's real, but my job is to I mean, you've heard that morning show on MSNBC is they were like, our job is to tell you what to think. That he knows that's his job is to craft the way the people think because his paycheck de is dependent. On I don't it. think Ryan I don't think disagrees. these guys I don't think these guys would be that much different than us when we were talking to them privately. I really don't. What I think you would find if you got him drunk is he would say, "Yes, I believe Donald Trump is a clear and present danger to the republic." Yes, I really do. Yes. and and when you believe that, and there's there's there is there is an intelligent argument for that whether you agree with it or not there's there is that intelligent argument or i've heard it made and if you really believe that you are willing to say for example now they want to take this hunter biden laptop so it, but, but it, it you may believe be, it may very well be this guy's a major liability to joe biden he for a thousand reasons crack pictures all that stuff fine but if that's what's going to cause our guy to lose and put donald trump back in power then we can't. Hold on. Can I push really, back on it. that? Yeah. Um, uh, can I, I agree just with him. It's a war room. No, I, I want to say real quickly an extreme, but the French resistance with, knock, with Nazis occupying it's, it's France. Resistance. Resistance. Yeah. They had forged documents and forged papers and fake outfits and stuff, and never, no one ever accused them of plagiarizing That's or right. lying or whatever. In their mind, we're fighting Hitler, yes. right. and anything goes. Yes, right. And it, by the way, they didn't play it that close to the vest. They called Trump Hitler all the time, yes. said he was dangerous, said it's the end of our democracy. Yes. With that in mind. If you do believe it's the end of our democracy and he's Hitlerian, then it's your duty to lie to get him out of office. Now, I would remind everybody, I would remind everybody that the Republic was saved in 1800, the most important election in American history. You could argue was 1800, uh, what is it, John Adams and Thomas Jefferson, and both sides truly believed that the other side won. It would be the end of what they had been fighting for. And all of them, 
all of them, I think with the exception, maybe that was when Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr and Aaron Burr shot Alexander Hamilton. I can't remember exactly, but there was no violence. They, they, they said, if we resort to violence, if we are the every republic after a civil war, every country after a civil war, always, I'm sorry, every after a revolution, when they throw the yoke of their oppressor off, they always have a civil war. And the United States, I think, is the only example of that. And See, so those I black say, athletes don't have this rap. Yeah, that's why <laughs> you see what I'm your saying. Uh, I mean, like, if, if you, if you, you follow I mean? these guys, like I mean, we're going all the way back to let's even go back to Hillary Clinton, and where CNN is giving them the answers, and then we go back to they're all on Jeffrey Epstein's flight logs and meeting with Jeffrey Epstein. It's way bigger than that. If you want to go that that they thought that Trump was a threat to the thing to to the republic. Okay, fine, I'll believe that. But the Hunter Biden thing was about real truth to real power and what that represented. And all these guys, all cash and checks, playing along. So I think it's a lot more than just they thought Trump was going to destroy the Like this weird patriotism thing. I think it's that. They want access to power. They want money. And this is the game you got to play to be a part of this system. Well, I think we can meet in the middle, mm. which is I think they use the Trump is going to start a nuclear war with Russia as the impetus to do something they wanted to do already and sort of hide behind the patriotic shield of we had to stop yeah, okay, this guy. All right, we need to take a break. Uh, I want to get into the Jeffrey Epstein thing as long as we're, as long as we're do breaking it. down the game film. We'll do some news as well. We'll do that right after this. All right, let me tell you about uh, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes life bogs you down. You feel overwhelmed. You need to work with a therapist and it can help you get, uh, well, closer to a better version of yourself. Look, if there's anything we've learned over the last couple of years, you got to get your head right and then get your body right and get the rest of your life right. And that's where better help comes in. If you're thinking about therapy, better help is a great option. It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. You just fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist and uh, you can switch therapists anytime at no additional charge. But uh, let's take care of ourselves in 2023. Let's get some better help, right, Dawson? If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can help get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Corolla today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Corolla. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey Adam, Jason from Chico. If they had a tampon dispenser in the guys' locker room at my high school, you'd find tampons everywhere in that school. Teacher would reach for a piece of chalk, tampon. Your buddy takes a bike a bite of his hoagie, tampon. What the fuck are these people thinking? Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Oh, Sam Tripoli and Brian Callen in studio. They've, uh got themselves some conspiracy theories um <laughs> podcast conspiracy conspiracy social club on rockfin and on youtube the, sam comes up with the conspiracy conspiracy. Free wherever you listen to podcasts the right? uh the jeffrey epstein thing i sort of didn't think about too much but saw an expose on it uh recently and there's a few there's some interesting things like a well let's just start at the start <laughs> there are many powerful people that want him dead i that's that's it's hard to dispute that anybody who went to that island who flew on those flight logs and, and did god knows what there's just many billionaires and people in a lot of positions of power who would be happy if he just had a heart attack in the middle of the night and never testified and, and, and never saw saw the inside of a courtroom so i think we can kind of sign off at least on a general motive versus, you know, the junkie from Alhambra. We found him hanging in the in his cell. It's sort of like he didn't know anybody. He never no. He didn't. People didn't owe him money. He didn't owe people money. Like that guy, you can wrap your head around. Well, he fucking depressed. He hung himself, or maybe somebody killed him. But I don't see a lot of motive for killing. So you you got that, and you got all these great. There's a great clip. I don't think we ever played a Bill Gates. Did we play that Bill Gates 
clip on uh, there's one and he's getting interviewed and it's like how about Epstein? What'd oh you, yeah, well, he's dead. What did you learn? What did you, what did you learn from Epstein? Well, well he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, good, good for me. All right, so you got a lot of people. Look. Bill Gates would like him dead even if Bill Gates never fucked an underage chick. It's just way too much talk and your name keeps coming up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And God knows who's going to lie. You know, I mean, maybe everything was legitimate. Just Bill Gates and Bill Clinton and, and, and Trump and whoever. Maybe everything was yeah. all above the board. Maybe you just flew in domestically on the Lolita Express <laughs> to do charity work. Let's just say. But do you want your name brought up constantly with this guy, no. and then do you want all the folks on the internet going bullshit? He did more than just right. fly internet, you know, nationally, domestically on that plane. So I think we can all agree there are many people in position of power, a lot of them who are glad he died. Uh, then the other part is is like according to his lawyer, according to him, he was in pretty good spirits. Like he wanted to go to court. He there, wanted, He thought he could beat this thing. He, Yes. If you listen to uh, talk about people working there, his lawyer was there the day before. He had run of the prison. He had a chick hanging out with him. There's all the stories about what he was doing the day before he 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 got off. Now, you know, Ghislaine Maxwell just did an interview. We're going. He's like he thought he was getting off because he had this deal set that said they couldn't prosecute him on anything. Yeah. And, all right. So he thought he was getting out. Then there is the. Well, he tried to kill himself earlier in the week or two weeks beforehand. Now he got beaten up by a prisoner. That wasn't him. Was that true? Was yeah. that did they prove that? Did I don't. He, that's because, when they had a big I, uh, power outage. You remember that? Yeah, but, it, but I, I he don't said. Uh, here's my thing. If he he tried to kill himself, if someone had tried to kill him, he would have said somebody tried to kill me. And, I and, think, and they, he didn't say that. Why? I think he said somebody beat him up or something. Can I don't know. We up? can we can try to look at look. Because I don't up. know if his lawyer said that. His lawyer would have said that, right? Here's my thing. All right, there's a few more. There's a few more ahead. parameters here, hear. which is then the cameras went out. Okay, but the cameras outside of cell block nine, where there were like eight they, or they ten cells. Yeah. Those worked, and nobody came in or came out. Thus, he couldn't have been murdered, except for he could have been murdered by some of the maniacs that were yeah. in his cell, in yeah. his wing. That big in, cop? Have you in, big in his block could have been. Mm. Then the two cops that basically fell asleep on the job, they weren't prosecuted. And then Dr. Bowden, the guy who does, you know, number one uh autopsy guy in the world was like, uh, I've never seen hanging and suicide look like this on the throat. It looks like this bone was crushed and that bone was crushed. I've never seen this before. I don't think it was suicide. I think it was homicide. And then the DA or whoever in, in New York went, well, okay, we've all agreed it's suicide. Moving on. Yeah. Okay. So, and Brown, Dr. Brown's like, I didn't agree it was suicide. And it's like, we decided suicide. We're moving forward. Also, his body was like moved from the cell into the infirmary or something before anyone got there. There's just a lot of stuff. And I would have bought all of it three years ago, but just listening to Wolf Blitzer, uh, yeah. I don't I don't buy a lot of it anymore. Yeah, I the most plausible thing I think is this that this is the fun part of the show. Th yeah, th this is the kind of conversations we have on the podcast because Sam is a conspiracy theorist and I tend to try to debunk them. <laughs> but and I win. No, but um I think my my feeling is that we don't know where he got a lot of his money. Uh I think he bought that crazy mansion in Manhattan for a dollar from Wexler who started Victoria's Secret and the Limited and all that. Did he really um, kill himself? Well, so so the the, the 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 question would be what's the motive, right? Was he a Mossad agent? Was were they using that island to get blackmail to get powerful men? They know powerful men want to get laid. You get them on an island. <clears throat> they have sex with somebody. Oh, by the way, she was 16. By the way, she was 17. By the way, she was whatever. You're married? You just had a twosome with these girls. You know that one of them was 14. You know, we, she might have looked 20, whatever it is. Or you maybe you're into that. They got all that stuff on you now. That's a foreign power. That's an intelligence community that has that power. And <clears throat> now they have crazy influence on everybody from Clinton to Buckingham Palace to you name it. 
that would be that is something I can sink my teeth into. If I was if I was the an intelligence community like Mossad, and I wanted, you know, its influence. What a great and ingenious way to do that. Yeah, and I'm, so, I'm open to so that too. I, I know people who've met him <clears throat> and said when the minute they left, he, my friend said he said what I tell you, and his wife said you said he's a construct. They met and he was like it made no sense. The man was a construct. What's he doing? He was interested in fi- science. He was interested in all these things, but it made no sense. Where did he get his money? He was a yeah. traitor. So there's just too many things that we don't know about. And we also know for sure, you want to talk about a cover-up. Let me give you one example. I did a podcast with a guy named James Bamford. He wrote a book called Spy Fail. He is, he's written more about the NSA than anybody else. Three books on the NSA. Well, there's a, there is Arnon Michlan is the biggest producer in Hollywood. He's worth $4 billion. He is an Israeli citizen. He's made, he's, he produced Pretty Woman, Heat. You go, just go down the list. Crazy, all the great movies. Um, the man is no, this is, from his, this is from Israeli TV, from Israeli journalists. He is de facto, he has been smuggling nuclear materials like nuclear triggers out of the United States and sending them to Israel. That's been going on for 30 years. We know he is an Israeli spy. We know that. And every time, and that is something he admitted on Israeli TV. This is not conspiracy. That's Robert De Niro sitting right next to him. He goes, yes, I spied for my country. They're thinking about doing a movie for him. Every time the FBI, the State Department, or somebody tries to mount an investigation against Arnon Miklan, who's right now, he's in London now, but he's been in Malibu forever. Every time you try to do an investigation, what happens? He calls Bibi Netanyahu and says, hey, they're investigating me. And Bibi calls the president, and the president goes, this is too sensitive, this is all intelligence stuff, and he puts it away in a drawer. That's according to James Bamford, who's a credible journalist. Sounds and, like some and, and dancing that's, Israeli stuff. That's also, that's also but the, the irony is the Israeli press is the one that brought all of this to light. So... Not you know, Wolf Blitzer. No, no. So, so <laughs> what about the operation or the situation room? Right. He's got a room. This could be one of the situations that's in there. The idea is if 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 Jeffrey Epstein was helping American intelligence and he was Israeli an asset, a Mossad asset, and a CIA asset, and they were using this thing or whatever, the, the idea is that it's not surprising that he would have been protected or that very powerful people didn't want to be exposed. Why is Jillian Maxwell? She's sitting in jail right now. Who did she traffic these women to? Who? Where are the names? I Is know. it just Jeffrey Depp? If she's in jail for that long, who did she traffic those women to? Is it just one person? Is that what she's been accused of? And why isn't she talking? And why does Bill Gates need a free flight? Like, I suck Mark Garagas's dick so I can fly private twice a year. I don't even like the dude. But, but if I had... 10 times the money that Mark Garagos had and had my own jet, then I, I wouldn't be sucking his dick. Oh, yeah. That's uh, We have the clip, by the way, of uh, Epstein. So yeah, this it's, is so it's, uncomfortable. It's, it's great. It's so uncomfortable. What did you do when you found out about his background? Well, and, you know, I've said I regretted having those dinners. Uh, and All there's 26 nothing, absolutely them. nothing new on that. Is there a lesson for you for... Anyone else looking looking at this? Well, he's dead. So, uh, you know, in general, you always have to be careful. Uh, All right. He's dead. Uh, I so, that. So let me Is get there any lessons? Sam, Let's, any yeah. lessons your grandfather ever taught you back then? Well, he's dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like yeah. stitching time, safe <laughs> right. nine or something like that. He's dead. Yeah. He's dead. He's dead. And it comes, and you could be dead too. So watch, <laughs> mind your man, mind your P's and Q's, because you're asking a lot of questions I don't feel comfortable with right now. Uh, but what, did he know? Oh, he that, never wore a mask, by the way. You brought that up earlier. Oh, like, uh, yeah. In, in the mask? height of it. All right. So, so when when Epstein when Bill Gates found out that Epstein had been convicted, uh, what 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 happened? What did Bill Gates know about where he had those dinners after that? Well, like, his Bill Gates' wife says in interviews, like, yeah. I, I part of the reason I left is because because uh, of him. This guy's hanging out with Epstein. I know, that guy's creepy. And yeah. I don't like that guy. So, but something. but 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 he he He's did Jose he get loyal. convicted or did he get investigated for for sex trafficking what was it or was oh, it underage epstein? epstein what was the first charge where they, they said he does gonna... he got under he got Trump underage whatever early and but then he bill got gates a... kept going to dinner with him yeah so he bill gates knew that this guy had been 
Was he convicted though? Because the, the case was know. thrown no, out. No, 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 no. He he, he was, was accused. I guess. Yeah, yeah, they worked out a plea deal. Okay, they worked out a plea deal. And, and, Interesting. In which he did no none of the stuff he had to do on probation. He he didn't do any of it. It's so weird, man. It's such a mystery. The only thing I can think of is that the highest levels of of power are, are somehow covering this up. That, I, I mean, agree. All right, should we do a little news with uh, a little time? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, and I'm I'm glad these guys are here with the conspiracy theories because. Uh, as we record this, last night it was reported that there's a big Chinese balloon flying over Sam yeah. Montana, a massive spy balloon uh, believed to be from China. Uh, so, and, and and everyone's wondering what should we do with it. Joe Biden's like he decided against military options to, because of the risk to the civilians. All the debris could kill everybody underneath. That makes but, no sense. Yeah, so let's not shoot it down. So everybody is like, we're just gonna monitor it. We're closely monitoring. That's hey guys, the, worry the, about the balloon, but hey man, enjoy TikTok, which is a giant <laughs> Chinese spyware. Yeah, I mean, like, what are we doing here? Also, like a balloon is about the most unthreatening thing. Like I know what we'll do. We got satellites, but let's float a balloon. Yeah, over yeah. Montana. This has this has psyop written all over. Also, also, you could that could fall on my head and I'd be fine. That's a balloon. <laughs> I agree. That don't tell me about burnt debris. You could literally, I could, I'll take that face That's first. That's the slowest attack ever. You're like, ah, <laughs> you know what's <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, I'll go. It'll be a beach ball. Just have it fall at the Super Bowl and we'll just pass Whack it around. around. The Jimmy Buffett concert. You know, it's ironic. One of the bigger conspiracy theorists uh, I've ever interviewed is Ed Asner. Oh, oh and really? Ed, Ed Asner would ironically have theories about this balloon because he starred in a movie where there's a guy's oh. house left in a balloon, but he would have strong... Wasn't up he about wasn't up. balloons? Yeah. His, yeah, that's Ed Asner. But Ed right. Asner would have very strong balloon-related thoughts to this. I'm, I'm happy. It's weird that we're using a balloon in 2023, yeah. number one. Number two... Uh, the Japanese did a balloon thing to us in World War II, which I always thought was very yeah, interesting. Nobody knows about it. Nobody that. knows about it. They it's so weird. How do you control a balloon? They, you know well, what I'm saying? Uh, like, what if it just started out in China and just drifted all the way over? Yeah, maybe there's a used RV lot and it was just over it. It said, like, you know, right. top dollar paid for trade ins, you know, in Mandarin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it just broke loose of its tether and got over us. Also, bring it down and study it. But there's also that people don't realize with the Chinese, it's like first you got TikTok, but there's also this belief that basically any Chinese nationalist anywhere in the world is pretty much a spy at that point. That's kind of part well, of that's, the game. That's what Andrew Bustamante said on Lex Friedman. He's yeah. a CIA guy. I mean, you look at all these guys like, uh, you know, these guys that just got kicked off the intelligence. Eric Committee. Swalwell. Yeah, I mean, he's banging a Chinese spy. <laughs> yeah, but we need him on the Intelligence Committee. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, yeah, so Sam, the- Sam's a conspiracy theorist, but I will say after 210 episodes, I do. F- he's a lot of times he's kind of right. Like yeah. I'll, I'll look into it and I'll be like, oh, damn it!" Like the, about COVID and about a lot of stuff. I'm just and like, the things I'm not right about. He just has to go talk to someone and they'll say the same thing to him in a different kind of voice. Yeah, and then he'll be like, "Oh yeah, you're they right have, about they have that." Degrees. Too. Well, the Paul <laughs> Pelosi thing didn't appear to be is conspiratorial as we thought when they weren't releasing all the tape, which is to say, uh, if you'd like people not to put together the elaborate conspiratorial constructs over the events, then be, be open yeah, release the and release everything. And then we'll stop everyone from putting together their It becomes ideas. like almost this and the DeMar Hamlin thing becomes a honeypot in a way right. where we get conspiracy theorists come in, they get this narrative, they're shouting, and then it turns out it's not real. And all the people who've been wrong forever, like, oh, you got that wrong. Right. They just hang their hat on that one win. <laughs> right. You're yeah. the guy. You're the uh, you're John Stockton. Oh, you missed the free throw. Yeah, yeah I shoot 99%. Yeah, right. but, oh, but you missed <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, like, yeah. All right. It's like when Michelle Walensky's in her kid, just like, oh, keep marking, keep yeah, marking, yeah. and you're wrong. No, yeah, sorry, yeah, it's not going to yeah, happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the Chinese Foreign Ministry, they posted a statement about it. They, they admitted that the, quote, airship comes from China. It is of a civil nature and is used for meteorological, me, sorry, meteorological climate. Climate or other balloon. scientific yeah. research yeah. affected by the westerly belt and its own limited control ability. The airship seriously deviated from the predetermined route. China regrets that the airship strayed into the United States due to force majeure. China will contain, continue to maintain communication with the U.S. to properly deal with this unexpected situation caused is by force it? majeure. 
Is that the picture of it? That's it. it you know what like they the said? They said, why are they not shooting it down? And somebody said, well, because we may have stuff over their <laughs> airspace that I, we don't want shot down. I would like, we need Ted Nugent with a crossbow <laughs> in the back of those two seater crop dusters. Yes. Just pull up right next to it. Full Wango Tango, yep. wearing the loincloth, shirt off. Just pow! That's right. Blow it up. That's I'd right. watch this shit. We could sh- we could bl- we we could blow up the internet if we could get Ted and a crossbow in the back of one of those. <laughs> Let's pipelines. release a couple bald eagles. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Genetically engineered eagles. Yes. That's right. Yeah. So a senior U.S. official did did say that he believes a balloon can take high res pictures and is flying along areas where there are missiles There's and so bases. There's so much other so, things yeah. that they're doing spying that this is the least of the It's concern. weird. Yeah. I do it's I slow, do yeah. it's I do big. like the covid part where everyone's like, "Look, China says it came from a pangolin, that's good enough for me." It's like, <laughs> yeah. "Now you believe yeah. anything these people say?" No, no, they said it wasn't from the lab. Uh, yeah. yeah. Guess what that? Yeah. That means it's from the lab. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. No, we're in the situation room. I'm Wolf Blitzer and China China said that the situation was that it came from a pangolin or a bat. Mm-hmm. This is called the room where we examine <laughs> the situation. The situations is they said that it came from a wet market. Right. Oh, okay. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, China it's would it's never they lie. They don't believe. Yeah, they would totally. never lie. I still ever. can't figure out who they is. Yes. Uh, yeah. They is. Yeah. They. Right. Who's actually originating of, these stories? You know. Well, hey, do you guys ever watch The Boys on, uh, yeah. I think it's it's Amazon? Amazon? Yeah. That would, that show lets you know, like, the, the the method that they do, you know? And it's like they had this thing where the one evil one, she's like, we create memes on both sides, and we throw them out, we see what gets traction. I'm like, dude, watch that, man. You want to understand <laughs> how the, everything works? Watch The Boys, man. There's a group, most likely some sort of intelligence, and they are just constantly putting out stories to get you misdirected in different ways because they never want anybody to come together. That is their biggest fear. If we all come together and we're like, hey, dude, stop doing this, they're, they're in trouble. There's I don't think human money. beings need any help. Human beings break up into tribes so quickly. It's so easy. For, I mean, it, it's just so natural for human beings to be like, we yeah, are cooler Brian, go than back them to over Vietnam. there. Go back to Vietnam yeah. and look what, how America reacted when they wanted to leave Vietnam. Giant protests across the spectrum yeah. of whether you white, black, male, female, straight, gay, whatever it is, yeah. you were there. Pro- that was the first That's time their TV biggest came. fear. But that was the first time TV, a uh, war came to TV, right? It was the first time. And I mean, they, they had World War II stuff. Yeah, but there was it literally was, that was propaganda very to get you to be into war. Very they, controlled, very controlled, though. And all right, let's do, let's do another one. Uh, let's do another one. So British Columbia has become the first in Canada to decriminalize cocaine, heroin, and meth. Damn. Yeah. These are, this is an interesting discussion. Yeah, so... Uh, so they mm. people who live in the region who are over the age of 18 will now be allowed to carry 2.5 grams of things like cocaine, heroin, fentanyl, meth, and morphine. It's part of a three-year experiment to see if decriminalization can help impact drug use. Portugal did it in uh, 2001 when they removed criminal punishments for drug possession. And since they d- did that, they s- ceased criminalizing drug use. Uh, the results have been dramatic. They, uh, the number of people voluntarily entering tr- treatment has increased significantly while overdose deaths, HIV infections, problematic drug use, and incarceration for drug-related offenses have plummeted. And Oregon's just started doing this, Anybody too. who's traveled to Portland or to Seattle you, yeah. you or Vancouver, everybody talks about how great those places are. You're walking down, there are three coffee shops and, a, and a, somebody makes cob, a cobbler and it's just quaint. You, you take a right turn and it's, it's land of the walking dead <laughs> yeah it's literally like what that 20 year old woman's missing teeth what the fuck is yeah. going and, on and here? also everyone's always been a problem the shit that goes on in portugal or you know they they do this shit all the time like in denmark they're on the honor system <laughs> if somebody wants a danish you go in the studio help yourself and then you leave five deutschmarks yeah. on the countertop yeah. and yeah. it works it works perfectly great yeah. yeah bring that shit to la <laughs> good luck. see how long before it turns into fucking yeah. thunderdome <laughs> see how long before the gangbanger grabs all the danish and then goes down to the park and starts and training it for sex. All the right are closed like, near me because yeah, of that. They do. They pick these little populations of people that are all exactly the same right. from a heritage yeah. standpoint and all grew up in, in a certain culture. thing, established yeah. culture. And they go, 
it it works in Iceland. Yeah. Yep. Why wouldn't it work yeah. in the San Fernando yep. Valley? What? Because we're crazed fucking narcissistic <laughs> Crazy, animals yeah. from all. We took the worst people from every country and we dropped them off in the San Fernando Valley, and we're all going to do fucking battle over <laughs> Danish now. But I, I I get that it worked in your little shitty homogenous pocket of the of the globe. But yeah. do not think because it works on a very limited basis with your population right. that it shit's ever going to go yeah. to Chicago or New York or L.A. and come close to working. So true. But like, there's also something about this. Like the the less taboo something is, the less people want to do it. Look at look at how like loosey goosey we are with sex now. Now young people aren't. They're not having any sex. These guys are going a year, two years without getting laid. When I was yeah. a guy, I'd be losing my mind. They don't care anymore. Dude, we came up during the AIDS crisis. We'd be like, yeah, you could die, but I'm rolling the dice. Yeah. No condom, right? fuck it. You look clean. So with the drugs, it's interesting because like I don't think it serves any purpose if I'm busted with drugs for me to go into jail for drugs. I, I'm not saying legal. I, I, I struggle with drugs. I struggle with coke, speed, and uh, booze. And I think if I go to jail and you give me a felony for having it, buying it, that cripples my ability to get a real life going after I get out of jail. I'm always a felon. It's so hard for me to get a job. So there is some kind of middle that we should work on where like, okay, you got buzzed with drugs. Here's a, you, maybe you go into, well, why do we have privatized prisons? Why can't we have privatized rehabs where you force these people into rehabs to get done? They don't necessarily get a felony so they could still work later on. You know what I'm saying? Like there's this weird kind of- Are you on the coke now? I'm not no. on the coke. Okay, no, he's just how I am. Like, you sound a little beaked like. up. No, you, this okay. is how I am. Do you know what the new? Th- you know what <laughs> no. they they're they're using to? Uh, this is crazy to get you off heroin. Besides the other stuff, sunlight. They find that people who are exposed to sunlight have a much easier time kicking uh, heroin. One hundred. It's so first thing you do yeah. when you become a junkie is you put tin foil up on every window. Yeah, yeah. and there create the darkness. There okay, I think so. Here's my kind of take on this. Um, you know, it's like when they go. You know, we want to build a border wall. Wall never stopped anybody. Yes, it it, it can it stop. It's yeah. not going to stop everybody. But your premise that it never stopped anybody is right. insane. It will be there effective. are many many walls. So we got to slow it down. So you do. They do that. Like if somebody wants drugs, they'll get drugs. They'll find drugs or whatever. But like. I remember when I was like 22 and poor and someone like, is there pot? Who has pot? No one has pot. Does anyone know a guy who has pot? He's not around. Someone go to the park. Like there's a lot of like, we couldn't get pot. And like, it took an effort. We wouldn't smoke pot sometimes yeah. because it just like kind of wasn't around. So this sort of notion of like, it's always around. You can get it whenever you want and all this stuff. If you make something scarce, a lot of people can't, get hold of it, I mean, whether it's pot or fentanyl or toilet paper, yeah. you know, it, people kind of, like, like you could go, uh, all right, what if you just got rid of all the booze? Don't you think, a guy like me, how long before I, I bought bat, bathtub gin? And mm-hmm. it's like, well, I probably would find my way to a speakeasy Maybe, or something, yeah. but I think my drinking would go down about 87% if you yeah. just removed all booze all the time from everywhere. It's a good, that's a really good... I'd uh, probably not drink as much is, yeah. is what I'm saying. And alcohol is the biggest problem by far. But, right, so, but then I don't want pills. people going, I don't want people locked up in prison because they're drug yeah, addicts, that's and my I, I don't thing. want homeless people who are junkies in prison, but we need to do something. Well, they're, they're not talking, when they say decriminalize, they're not not talking about making it legal there's a difference so so if you have a certain amount of recreational cocaine on you or meth or whatever it might be you're not going to get that felony that's what they're talking about yeah. so that they say look you know you can zone it you can do it over here uh you can use a clean needle if you really want to do that that's what they did in zurich and portugal and stuff like that but but i, I do know this this like we need to set up clean, safe injection sites where people in the judgment it turns into a shithole. Yeah. I agree. In, yeah. in a matter of seconds, yes. we did. We just did it with prostitution. Like we want to decriminalize prostitution because it affects the LGBT community, whatever. <laughs> now there's just a bunch of fucking runaways getting yeah. fucked on the street. The pimps are the only ones that are making the money. Yeah, like yeah. you, I agree. This thing where the government goes, here's what we're gonna do. Don't worry, it's gonna work out because in, in Belgium it works. Works yeah. out just fine. I don't trust you motherfuckers, especially in California or Oregon or Washington. 
I'm assuming you're going to fuck everything up royally yeah. when you do the here's my plan. But so, they might be talking about I see. I don't mind this because what they're actually saying is government should st- keep their hands off this. Yeah, I'm right. I like, like so, 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 because I think cocaine and meth and these drugs that they're they're uh, legalizing, they have their own built-in limitations. You're gonna hit a wall. I don't care how legal it is or how you're not gonna get in trouble. You do you do cocaine. You're gonna wake up very quickly. Meth and no heroin re- are no the resume. You're gonna have no resume. They're they're, gonna they're, go. they're now saying you can't even get heroin anymore. It's all. Fentanyl. Really? Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. All right, uh, I'm up against it here, people. So Sorry. sadly, we got to. I mean, Sorry I, I yelled I, so much. No, I, I, I love yelling. I love. I love yelling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a yeller. People, and people always go like, "Oh, you, uh, you're so angry." It's like. No, I don't. I fucking get it out. Yeah. You're yeah. the angry, angry one. You're, you're all fucking pent yeah. up. Yeah. I had to fucking pop this zit every day. Yeah. Nothing's <laughs> building. I got I got no pus. <laughs> I, oh, I lance skin. it and purge it, man. <laughs> Hot towel, lance it, and pow Bang. every day. Never walking around. But 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 don't worry. I refill fast. <laughs> Sam uh, Brian, the podcast. Well, let's get Brian a. a uh, a plug here, the Brian Callen Show, wherever you find finer podcasts. Also, he's got live shows, Zanies coming up in Nashville, com- the York Comic City. Strip in uh, Alberta, yep. Canada. Yep. Sony Hall in New York City, March 11th. Beautiful. Get tickets. Special <laughs> Man Tears, his specials are great. And uh, check that out on YouTube. Sam Tripoli, The Social Club, aka uh, Deep Waters, that's the pod. And then the uh, you can also... Find out his live shows. Going to the Dojo Comedy. That's coming up in uh, Morris Plains, New Jersey. And then Los Angeles is going to be at the Comedy Store coming up February 22nd. Go to samtripoli.com. Uh, go to amcrolla.com for all my live shows. I'm going to West Palm Beach and at the Improv on Great the 16th. Club. And then, yeah, it is good. And then Baltimore McGoobies. Just go to amcrolla.com for all that. Until next time, Am Crowley, Sam Tripoli, Brian Callen, Chris Maxabata. Say it. Mahalo. Mahalo.